Good afternoon, Council. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, any conflict amongst any of the Council members here tonight? Seeing none, uh, I need a motion to adopt the uh, published agenda tonight meeting. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Deputy Mayor Malash, all in favor? That's carried. And we'll go to uh, the reports from administration, right to Doug. Mr. Mayor. Um, most people don't want to hear me speak, so I'll actually defer right to our Director of Corporate Services and she can delve right into the budget. Thank you. Through the Chair, I'm going to have Shelley pull up our agenda and proposed. So welcome back. This marks our first meeting for Council Budget Deliberations. So you will see on the agenda uh, a total of four resolutions. Uh, the intent is not necessarily to get all of these resolutions passed tonight, but these four resolutions would need to be passed by the end of the budget process. So while administration would love if they were passed tonight, this uh, may continue on into January where we have two more deliberation meetings set. Uh, tonight, we are going to break up the meeting. We're going to address operating first uh, we will break at that point, ask for the resolutions to be passed that uh, involve operating, and then we would move on to the capital discussion. So you can see here that the resolutions are basically asking for the adoption in principle of the 2022 operating budget, inclusive of all operating adjustments summarized in the listing of changes since our last meeting on November 29th. And I will walk through what that statement of adjustment looks like shortly. Uh, the second resolution being to, uh, it encompasses uh, the operating budget. That's why we've mentioned it here. And it's to request the waiver of rental fees for the use of the sports field at the Harrow Soccer Complex. And our CAO will speak on that once we uh, get to that point of the meeting. The third resolution being to adopt the 2022 capital budget as presented inclusive of all capital adjustments. Again, we will address what that statement of adjustments looks like shortly. And then the last resolution, which we would like to have passed tonight is the authorization to complete in fiscal year 2022, any carry forward or 2021 projects that remain outstanding at December 31st, 2021. And they may not necessarily appear in the 2022 budget as presented, as long as the project costs do not exceed previously approved funding amounts or allocations. So right now we're going to uh, pass it over to myself. I'm going to show you what the statement of adjustments looks like. And just bear with us for one second while we get this pulled up. Just give us one brief moment. A few of the uh, councillors are having some technical difficulties, so just bear with us, please, for two minutes while uh, we try to get everyone logged onto the call.
Hang tight. Just wanted to say, I know it looks like I'm in my car and I am, but I'm not driving. I am concentrating on the meeting. Through the chair, that's a good disclaimer to make, Councillor Bjorkman. Through the chair, I apologize for the brief interruption there. At this point, Shelly's gonna hand uh, the screen over to myself. Um, and I am going to give you an overview of what the statement of adjustments looks like. Uh, we will be reverting back to this throughout tonight's deliberations. And as this, um, you know what, sorry, just one second. Okay, through the chair. Sorry about the brief delays there. Can everyone see the statement of adjustments up on screen right now? Perfect. So I'm going to walk through how this statement of adjustment works. Again, we're going to break up tonight's discussion, um, have operating discussion first, um, pass the resolutions at that point if uh, time permits, and then we would move on to capital. So as you can see here, I'm just going to zoom in. We have our table A, which is the 2022 operating budget. You'll see that we have our revenues and our expenses. This was what was presented to council on our November 29th walkthrough. Uh, any changes that are discussed tonight uh, and approved by council will be noted here. Uh, for a final resolution occurring partway through the meeting. So at this point, um, we're going to hand it back to Shelly, who is going to start at page four of the budget snapshot. Did that work? So if you refer to page four, the unapproved change to the municipality's general mill rate equated to 1.8%. You will see here the operating summary where we proposed 47 million, $47,381,282,000 of revenues. And then also proposed was operating expenses of 47 million, $137,471. This resulted in a net surplus, which was then transferred to capital of $243,811. We will go through the positions 
as well as the OPP section after this. But at this point, I would open the floor up to council for any questions they might have. From council at all at this point? Okay, Kate, you can continue. Through the chair, we are now going to turn to page 16. Page 16 being the personnel overview and expense summary. So you'll see right here uh, that we have presented the overall impact of the change in salaries from the budget year 2021 to the This change equated to $360,000. And the new positions being brought forward for council consideration included a deputy chief building official, effective April 2022, an assistant manager of legal and licensing, and the introduction of part-time service clerks. I would ask at this point if council has any questions on the new positions brought forward. No, go ahead, Kate. So the next uh, fairly significant change in the budget was noted on page 21. So as you can see at the bottom of this page, there was the introduction of a traffic enforcement officer. The net impact of this to the budget was $190,000. At this point, I would open the floor up to council for any discussion or questions. Any questions? No question, uh, Councillor Bjorkman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you uh, to council in general, I am not in favor of bringing on another officer as a traffic enforcement officer. Uh, we're looking at the third highest paid member of the, the town of Essex um, staff. And we're talking about something that we should be directing our entire police force to be spending more time on, which is traffic enforcement. I think there's a lot of better places to spend 180 to $190,000 uh, in this budget. So I would just start with, uh, I will not support the addition of this position. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else? Uh, I will speak on this uh, myself, uh, did a little research. Uh, this officer can be pulled. Okay, we did some research. If this officer can be pulled, and what's happening here is that the force is guaranteeing us that if the officer is pulled off of uh, that duty itself, we will not be char charged for the service. Now, how do we control that? How do we know that? So I have to agree with Councillor uh, Bjorkman. I will not support this position either. Uh, I think uh, the money can be spent in other areas uh, uh, that we need it to be spent, uh, not not in this position here. I, I think uh, as as we contract uh, the OPP to do our our policing, that should be in the contract anyway. So I do not support this position either. Uh, Deputy Mayor Malash. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, and I am in support of this position. I know it's an expensive uh, line item, but traffic enforcement and speeding in this community has been an issue since I've been on council since 2003. This is something we've been pushing towards making happen. And every time it comes around, we say not at this time because it's too expensive. Let's push it out. At some point in time, we have to bite the bullet and move forward on this. Traffic enforcement is probably one of the, for me, it's one of the number one items that I get a complaint on every year that I've been on council. Um, speeding here and speeding everywhere. And uh, I think it happens whether you're in an urban setting or whether you're in a rural setting, we have a number of residents that have come forward and asked for speed reductions on their roads. We all know that that's not the answer to uh, eliminating speeding within our community. The answer is having more law enforcement that looks at this. We have in the past, as Councillor Bjorkman has suggested, 
We've done that in the past where we've gone to the police department and said, we want our police officers to spend more time doing traffic control and speed enforcement. And it just doesn't happen. There's not enough time with the, with the amount of police force, uh, police officers that we have in our contract. There's just not the additional time for them to be able to do this. They do it as much as they possibly can at this point in time. We're not going to squeeze any water from a rock. This is, it's not going to happen. If they could have done it, they've already have been doing it. What we need to do is we need to hire an additional police officer as we have in the budget, as presented, as we've discussed over the last few years, move forward with this, do it on a trial basis. If it doesn't work out, if we don't get the results that we're looking for, then we eliminate, the, but we have to bite the bullet at some point in time. Councillor Garen, go ahead. Service Mayor, you cut out through you. Um, yeah, just a couple comments on it. $190,000 for this position is a lot of money. Um, my biggest concern with it is we don't know because we, well, as we try it, we don't know if it's if it's going to have an impact that we want it to have. I'm, I'm, my concern is how we're going to gauge the, the result of it. How are we going to know after one year uh, what type of... Um, model or what, what type of stats are going to be provided to us to ensure that the $190,000 was justified spending. Um, because we have a dedicated officer out there moving them around the municipality, I mean, in, it seems like that would be all we would need, but I'm still a little concerned at that price if one officer is going to make a difference or not um, and how we're going to gauge it. That, those are my biggest concerns. Next. Councillor Bowman, go ahead. Thank you, and through you, Your Honor, um, I'm going to support the uh, hiring of the uh, officer. Uh, as um, Deputy Mayor mentioned, it's been an issue for years about uh, the issue we have or perceived that issue that we have for speeding. And uh, the one way to really hit it, uh, it will be a dedicated officer for traffic control and, uh, and primarily speeding. So uh, until you actually put the meat on the table and uh, saying we're going to do it, then uh, we will always run into that issue. So I'm going to support it. I know it's expensive, but uh, um, that's one of the um, big complaints we've been getting for years. And uh, this is the first time we've actually made an attempt to do something about it. So I will support it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Verbeek, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, clearly I'm gonna support it, but I just, I want to um, just bring a little clarity. Uh, the deputy mayor and myself have had several meetings on this. So some of the things that I, I hear concerns about we were able to get answered. And one of them is that yes, the mayor is correct in that our dedicated traffic enforcement officer that we're gonna pay a hundred, we may or may not pay $190,000 for can be pulled away. But that is only if they happen to be closest to a call. If there's an accident or something, or uh, there's a, an emergency that that officer is required. We were also assured that the minute, um, you know, other officers arrive, that would be passed off. Our enforcement officer would be back to only enforcing our traffic laws. We were also, it had, it had been explained to us that there were other municipalities that had done this and, and got success. And now in the end, we have a, an ability to track whether we want it monthly or by bi, bi-monthly or the enforcement that this officer is doing is going to come back to us. We will have a record of all the the, the tickets that they're writing. We're um, uh, going to be able to see a difference. And, and we also have the ability to pull the plug on the roll after a year or two. If we're not getting, if there's no proof in the pudding, we're not going to keep putting that money out. We also have to keep in mind that we did make a savings when we removed that uh, enhancement in January. So 
there is there is that that I just I just want to remind us of. But the 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 officer coming off enforcement and going at, at to closest to a call, or if there's more officers needed and he has to or he or she has has to leave, they will um, go right back to enforcement. Now with this enforcement position, they're they're going to be targeting troubled spots and writing tickets. So where we will be able to, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, direct uh, where we, we find our trouble spots. But they're also, the key here is that they're going to be available to do the ticketing when we need it the most. Part of what's happening with our trouble spots that keeps coming back to us is that the officers are busy at commuting hours. They're, and it's the, those commuting hours that they need to set up on our trouble spots. And we all have them in our wards, but just our regular officers have other work to do. A targeted officer would be setting up during those commute hours, during those trouble hours, targeting enforcement. So that's a little bit of clarity on some of those things. And I just wanna say, I'm going to support this and I'll be the first one to put my hand up next year and pull the plug on. Oh, well, I will. if I'm here next year, <laughs> the next budget, I, I would certainly pull the plug if it wasn't, if there, if it wasn't working for us, but for right now, I feel like we've tried everything and the, the seasoned counselors around this table have, have told me they tried everything. Uh, so many other things in our residents say they want us to do a little more about the um, distracted and the speeding and driving. So I'm going to support it. <laughs> Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm also going to support it because I think our residents uh, want it. I don't think it's it's a it's a budget issue. Of course, it is a lot of money but we did take out that enhancement. And if you look at the 2020 budget for policing, Essex was 3.2 million, Kingsville was 3.4, Tecumseh was 3.5 and yada, yada. And so it's kind of like you get what you pay for. If we put another 150, 200,000 into policing, we're still close to what Kingsville's paying. And you think of the layout of our municipality. It's a very hard municipality to police. We have a lot more roads than Kingsville. And our residents see a lot of speeding on, on every road, urban roads, concession roads. So I think they want a solution. And I, on, unfortunately, this seems to be the only solution. I have for the past year, maybe year and a half, watched almost every police service board meeting. I've zoomed in. Um, I do think counselors should be able to watch the police service board meeting because there's some really good discussions there. And, the police service board, along with council, we've tried everything. We've tried signs. We've tried trailers. We've tried messaging. One thing I've been listening to on 94.7 is they have a really good commercial about speeding. So if we don't have the position, maybe we could try some commercials. But the police service board, um, when they did the survey, when Councillor Verbeek initiated the survey, one of the top things that people were saying about the police is a lack of presence. So I think that this will help. So I'm going to support it. And when the vote does come, Mr. Mayor, I would like a recorded vote on this topic, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, yeah. So I, we have had the calls and I definitely do want a fix to the, to the problem. And there is a problem. I think it's a, I think it's a problem in, in a lot of municipalities, not just ours. So going back to Councilor Beek's uh, um, points on, on gauging this by writing tickets. That's all fine and dandy, but that writing tickets is not going to be a way to gauge it. Um, it doesn't mean when you write a ticket that that's going to fix the problem. Um, my concern is, is still that how are we going to compare next year? What are we comparing to? Have we got numbers um, right now as to if it's being gauged by tickets? We've got numbers right now as what we're doing in tickets uh, for speeding now. I don't know if we have that information compared to um you know um the the um the uh excuse me the trailers that we put up and stuff presents all that stuff is good but and, and i don't know if that's going to fix the problem and my concern is we just don't have anything to compare it to um have we had the conversation with 
with the current OPP chief about about our our our, our taxpayers' concerns and and about improving the speeding patrol right now with the existing force we have. Um, is this something that our police chief is recommending to us that we that we need it? Does he believe in that a dedicated officer is going to um, we're going to see results and it's worth getting? So those are the questions and, that I have and concerns I have still. I, I'm all for improving the situation. I just don't know if one hundred ninety thousand dollars and one dedicated officer is going to be able to do that. Councillor Van Andolen, you just got on. Did, did you have a, any comment on, on this hiring a officer for speed? <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Through you, excuse me, I just back from the dentist. I won't be able to speak too well, but um, in theory, I, I'm in favor of, con of controlling the speeding, but I don't think uh, if we're already spending $3 million in a police force and they're not doing it, throwing another hundred and something out at it, the problem is not going to solve it. It would be like giving the fire department extra money to fight more fires. Like it's, I don't think it's gonna work. So I think the money would be uh, much better used elsewhere. And we should uh, demand that uh, the service we are already paying for is delivered. So uh, I'm with Garen on that, Councillor Garen, sorry. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Malash, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. If we knew that we had fires that were not being extinguished, we would add more fire trucks to put out those fires. And I think that's what we're doing right now. We know that there's speeding going on that we cannot get under control. There are many, many, many neighborhoods that are asking for speeding reductions. We as councillors all have seen speeding happen. We've, I've talked to many of you and you've all experienced it in your own personal lives. It is my number one complaint is speeding. And this is what our staff sergeant, there's been many, uh, Councillor Verbeek and myself have had many conversations with our previous staff sergeant, Todd Levine. And he has told us that yes, this is an, a solution to getting speeding under control. Now, mind you, he's not 100% sure that one officer is gonna get it totally under control. There may become a time where we'd want a second officer hired so that we have a traffic enforcement, law traffic enforcement uh, team. And uh, that's, that's perhaps the route that we'll have to go at some point in time. But he's also suggested to us uh, uh, that what would happen is uh, through the police services board, we would get a report that tells us we could ask for a report that says this is... Um, a comparison to the previous year, how many tickets were addressed in this current year as opposed to the previous year. And if we don't see that number increasing or the number of sites that uh, were under control, we'll obviously see it in our complaints from residents. We should see less complaints. Um, but I think that you will honestly see some results even within a year's time. Now, we may not see it in 2022 because we've been told that this officer probably wouldn't start in effect until July minimum. Uh, so we wouldn't have a full year in this first year. But come 2023, uh, 2024, some, somewhere in that vicinity, we'll, we should be reevaluating and seeing whether we want to continue on this with this program, add to the program, or just not carry on with the program whatsoever. But I think we need to give this an opportunity for us to investigate. Nothing that we've done in the past has worked. This is an alternative to trying to get some kind of solution to uh, speed reduction within the town of Essex boundaries. Yes, Councillor Verbeek, go ahead. Um just uh, to add to that and to ask um, and to put our deputy mayor on the spot, I hope not because I can't answer this because I didn't know we were going to speak to it tonight and I don't have my notes. But when we did speak to um, Inspector Glenn Miller about this, um, we learned that the price will be less after the first year 
and I don't remember what that number is. So I'm just wondering if you know off the top, but I know that it, uh, he had explained it would be less after the first year because there was costs attached to the first year. But I also, um, as far as like, you know, uh, Councillor Guerin, those were good comments. I don't, I'm not 100% certain how we're going to see. Yes, we are going to be asking and receiving a report from this dedicated officer, just as we had received report from the staff sergeant on, you know, what they were doing monthly. So we'll be able to see that and give some direction as to, you know, our trouble spots. But I, two years ago, when um, I, I, I remember the deputy mayor saying to me, you know, I really, I just want people to say about Essex when they drive into our municipality, like they say about Chatham on the 401, slow down because you're going to get nailed. You know, my hope is that that'll become our Essex's reputation. Would that, that would be ideal, but I don't, I mean, who knows? None of us really know, but what the, what will become of a dedicated officer. But what we do know is that the myriad of things we've tried, the list is, you know, so long of what the police, what our what our what our our um, our police and uh, what the uh, police service board and the council have have directed and all the efforts that we've we've made aren't changing people's behavior. And when we do send an officer out once every six months to this road X because it's a trouble spot, then people modify their behavior briefly, but they know they're okay. But if we have an officer that's going to hit that spot, you know, three times a week for two months, people are, it, it, it may cause people to modify their behavior. And that's what we hear happens in some of the municipalities that have tried this. So, I mean, unless there's more ideas that, that uh, you know, we haven't tried, because I feel like we've exhausted a lot of them. So anyway, that's, you know, I don't know what what we're going to actually have to show us in the end, uh, Councillor Guerin, but here's hoping people are going to, you know, get to Essex and get off the gas and say, oh, no, that there could be an officer around the corner. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, we, we beat this around for a good 20 minutes now. Let's let's go. We, uh, Councillor uh, Bondi asked for a recorded vote. Go ahead, Rob. Um. Uh, Councillor Bonnie would be the mover. We we don't have a second or second point. Seconder for a recorded vote here. No seconder. So, so uh, you want to make your motion, uh, Councillor Bondi again? It won't be a recorded vote. You support it, so you, I'll need a seconder if you're going to go. Okay, with that. Mr. Mayor, what are what are we doing? I say point point of order. What's your point of order, uh, Councillor? Point. She doesn't have to have a seconder for a recorded vote. She's just oh. moving the vote, and we need a seconder for the vote. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The motion would be keep it in the budget. So, Rob. So through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I don't have clarification that we have a seconder on that motion to and. As I understand it, the proposed motion from Councillor Bondi is to adopt in principle the proposed traffic enforcement officer position as part of the 2022 operating budget. Uh, but we do not have a seconder on that. Councillor Bowman's going to second it. Chair, to confirm to Councillor Bondi that uh, Councillor Bondi has requested a recorded vote on that, on that motion. Correct. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Then on the motion, again, to as moved by Councillor Bondi, seconded by Councillor Bowman, to adopt in principle the proposed traffic enforcement officer position as part of the 2022. On that motion, how do you vote, Councillor Bondi? Support. Councillor Van der Dolan, how do you vote? Opposed. Councillor Bowman, how do you vote? Support. Councillor Guerin, how do you vote? I oppose it tonight. That's opposed. Councillor Verbeek, how do you vote? 
support. Councillor Bjorkman, how do you vote? Opposed. Deputy Mayor Malosh, how do you vote? Support. And Councillor, or sorry, and Mayor Snively, how do you vote? Opposed. With a recorded vote of four in support, four in pose, the motion fails. I am now going to pull up the, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, I'm now going to pull up the tracking sheet which shows the recorded vote that just occurred. At this point, uh, I do want to have a, a brief discussion on administration's uh, viewpoint. There was an email circulated that the recommendation from administration would be to transfer these monies into a reserve to be held um, for the future positions that the Town of Essex administration would be asking for in the future. Several business cases were prepared by town administration. Not all were brought forward for council's discussion due to budget constraints. Um, one position in particular was an engineering specialist. Uh, given the additional grant monies that were received, this position in particular would be used to ensure that capital projects were completed within their timelines. So we just want council to be aware that the four positions that were presented uh, were not all of the positions that were considered. Um, and I'll let any other directors, you know, feel free to speak at this point as well. Your Worship. Um, after the motion tonight, I guess it's up to council with $190,000. That money can be moved to reserve as our director of corporate service mentioned for future staffing costs as we have growth coming. We know that's a um, it can just reduce our tax increase. So just totally take it out. Or you could look at putting a combination of different things. So I think it's up to council. And that was the point in terms of that chart on the next steps you want, um, or we can defer it to later. So, so. any council input? Uh, Councillor Darren, go ahead. Oh, okay, with deferring it to later. Anybody else from council, Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm okay for uh, deferring it to later. I'd actually like to keep it earmarked under OPP in case in case we can uh, bring it back to to policing. Um, I'm not in favor of appointing or getting an engineering specialist. The same argument that can be used for the OPP we pay this amount of staff to do this job, we can use at the town of Essex. We pay our town of Essex staff to do the job. We really shouldn't need an engineering specialist to make sure capital projects are done on time because capital projects should just be done on time. <laughs> so I wanna keep it in the OPP uh, file. I think it was a huge mistake to not uh, go with the traffic enforcement officer since we've talked about it so many times since the OPP board gave a recommendation to do it. Councillor Bondi, if I can interrupt here for a minute. We already had a vote. Council's made a decision. Okay, don't, don't go there and say we had a huge mistake, okay? Council made a decision and respected decision that council made. So don't bring that up, please. Oh, I'm still going to bring it up, Mr. Mayor, because I'm going to still get complaints about speeding. So it's, there's a, it was a 4-4 vote and the people who voted it down, the complaints about speeding better go to those people and not for me because I was working for a solution tonight. We didn't get one. Keep it in the OPP budget if I have anything to say with it. And the people that voted it down, they can handle the speeding complaints from now on. Thank you. And you know what, Councillor, I'll just uh, give you a little bit of information here. We've, I've met myself with speeding issues. You know what, we have a police force. We give them so much money a year. 
that is part of their job to control speed. We're not the only municipality that has problem with speeding. So please respect your fellow councilors the way they voted, period. Lee, go ahead. Uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, it, I would, I just heard two motions and no seconds on the floor, but I, I liked Councillor Guerin's mention, but I am all, I would support the motion to keep it in policing for a while and, and see when and where we need it, because clearly the policing that we have in place right now it, in our municipality and all the neighboring ones isn't addressing the traffic. So I would be in support of that motion to just hang it, keep it in our uh, policing for now and decide in the future how we're gonna spend it. Uh, Councillor Verbeek, if you wish. If you'd like to move it and we'll have further discussion, okay, so you're gonna move it. Uh, I think uh, further discussion, I think Councillor Bjorkman, you are next. Uh, I'm sorry, I was after Councillor Vanderdolen, sir. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Vanderdolen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you and thank you, Councillor Bjorkman. Um, I didn't hear a motion from uh, Councillor Guerin and suggesting that we make a decision later doesn't mean that the money stays in the, the department. We just voted down getting the money. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's absurd. We just voted to defeat the motion to spend that money. So it's, certainly the money is not staying in that category. The money's gonna be going somewhere else. And that will be decided later tonight, but uh, I don't believe it's staying in the uh, OPP budget. Doug, uh, first, and then Councillor Bjorkman, I'll come back to you. Just for clarification, um, based on the vote tonight, if it's deferred, correct, it would not be placed in that cost center, but it would just remain in the 2022 operating budget. Okay, Councillor Bjorkman, you are next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Uh, so a question to administration. So since that uh, $180,000 is not going to be uh, going to the OPP position, um, is council able to direct administration to take that $180,000 and put it into capital uh, during tonight's discussions? Through the chair, yes, council can make that motion to increase the operating surplus and have the money used for the purchase of capital assets. Councillor or Councillor Garen, you're next. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I was just wondering the same thing. I was wondering if it had to be earmarked and kept in in, in uh, operation. Are we? Do we have to make? Are we making a decision tonight on? Do we have to make a decision tonight on operating? I know it's a recommendation, but does it have to be made tonight? It's, it, it feels like, I feel like I'm being pushed into making a decision on operating tonight and we're not even through it all yet. No, I, I, I don't think we have to make a decision, uh, Councillor Garen. So, no, we well, won't. There's a lot of talk about making the decision. That's why I'm asking. No, no, we won't have to. We don't have to make a decision tonight. Um, Councillor Verbeek, you had the motion. Can you... Uh, can you uh, state your motion again? I got to get a seconder for your motion. Just that we earmark that money for future, um, to keep it in the policing file in case we need to call upon it um, in the future. In Thank 2022, you. not just Thank shift you. it around right away. Okay, uh, is there a seconder for that motion? Councillor Bondi, uh, discussion? Councillor Guerin, go ahead. To you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Mr. Oje, with, with, with us just defeating that motion to spend that money, what would need to happen for that to come back to the, to the floor again? Mr. Chair, a motion of reconsideration, supported by two thirds of council 
and the mover and seconder would uh, need to be councillors who voted um, uh, on that motion. So it's two thirds. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Bjorkman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I won't be supporting that motion tonight. I think what's important right now is we're deliberating. So we are looking at monies and as we decide to not accept recommendations by administration, that you take that money and set it, to, set it aside. And as our evening goes through and as we deliberate through other things, we may find there is a spot that we agree on that that money can be used. So as we go through the budget, I think it's important we keep a running total of the things we disagree with administration as a council that we don't wanna put monies there. We keep that aside. And as we get into the capital budget and we're talking about all the other options that are there to us, we keep those funds aside and not make decisions early in this meeting that handcuff us later in the meeting when we say, oh, you know what we could have done. So let's keep our options open. As we go through the budget, take those totals, let's build them. And then we can come back and make our decisions once everything's been put on the table. But I think we're very premature to decide what to do uh, with funds as we move through the process. Thank you. Mover and a seconder, uh, Councillor Bondi was the seconder. So all in favor of uh, Councillor Verbeek's motion. Opposed? Motion gets defeated. Through the chair, I'm going to reshare my screen so that you can see our current statement of adjustments and where we stand after the two record or the one recorded vote and second motion. So, as you can see here, the surplus would now sit at $433,000. Uh, I think at this point, we continue on to the capital discussion. Uh, when time permits, we may present a resolution. Again, uh, we have three nights of deliberations tonight and two scheduled in January. Um, because with the reduction of this, it means a few things. Uh, either it's kept in the operating budget, as Director uh, CAO Sweet had said, and the tax rate remains at an increase of 1.8%. And council can determine if they want to transfer it to capital or keep it in operations, or uh, it is used to reduce the mill rate increase. So th there's three options there for council to consider. Um, but that being said, we'll continue on to the capital discussion uh, and uh, those funds would be available for use to fund new assets. I apologize, so, but can Kate repeat? She keeps cutting out. Through the chair, can you hear me now? We, we can hear you, but there's blips where we miss key words. Okay, let me repeat, sorry. If I can, it seems to be the issue when you go in and out of your screen, and it seems to happen even when, uh, um, when our clerk does it too. Through the chair, is this clear for everyone? I've swapped mics out at this point. Okay, I apologize for that. So I'm, I'm just going to reiterate what I just said as to where we stand on the operating budget. As of right now, the surplus has been increased to $433,811. The option for council, uh, there are a few, that $190,000 can be removed from the operating budget, which would result in a reduction to the proposed tax rate increase of the 1.8%. It can remain in the operating budget as administration recommended to be used uh, to be transferred to reserve to fund future positions, or it can be used, carried into the capital budget to fund new assets. So we will leave it as is. We will move on to the capital discussion at that point. 
But I think important for council to remember that that $190,000 would be available to be used to fund the purchase of capital assets that, are, that do not already have a proposed funding solution. Any questions before I move on to capital at this point? Any other questions at all on operating? Go ahead, Doug. Your Worship, just before we go to capital, there is one motion that is on the table uh, regarding the Harold Soccer Complex. That administration is looking if council will waive the user fees for sport utilization for 2022 at the Harold Soccer Complex. Over the past three years, we've averaged $500 to $700 in a revenue brought in. So we're using this as a strategy. We may attract users to use the facility and in the future years come back. So I'm looking if council would support that. Councillor Guerin, did you, you gonna move that? Yes, I will, I'll move that. Okay, seconder, Councillor Bowman seconds it. Any discussion? All in favor of that? It's carried, thank you. The council could now please turn to page 44 of their budget document. So before we go through, uh, and we're going to do the same format as prior years, we're going to go through section by section and ask if council has uh, any questions on the section proposed, uh, and, and we'll go through the budget document in that form. Um, I'm just going to revert back to the tracking sheet as I do want to highlight uh, additional grant monies that have been received and administration's recommendation for those grant monies. Council can see here, uh, what we have is a detailed tracking sheet of the capital budget changes that uh, Council will deliberate on tonight. Uh, where I'm going to zoom in on is additional grant monies uh, received. Correspondence was sent out to Council earlier this week on some grant monies uh, where the actuals are expected to come in higher than what we had budgeted for. This approximates to approximately $911,000, $911,741 additional outside of budget. This specific grant money can be used for various infrastructure purposes, such as storm sewer, roads, bridges, etc. So administration is uh, recommending that $500,000 of this 911,000 additional be applied to the Essex Streetscape program. The reason being that on the walkthrough night, some graphics were presented to council. Long-term debt, the total outstanding balance, uh, should the entire $6.3 million go through, uh, would be at the highest level that the municipality has been at. Um, it, it is doable and when we looked at the indicators provided by the ministry, we are still in line with our indicators, but we are um, verging the point of a moderate risk to high risk on the debt servicing level. The $500,000 would ensure that we remain where we always have with those indicators. And it would, all, it would also result in an additional $37,000 annually in saved on the operating side of things. Uh, there is, however, an additional 411000 outside of this that could be used to fund uh, new or replacement assets. And uh, if should the $500,000 allocation to the long-term debt uh, reduction not be approved, it would be available for use as well. I think we'd first be looking for approval to designate the funds for this use, and then council would have uh, would know the remaining funds that would be avail available for use for the 2022 budget year. Any questions from council on this one? 
Councillor Van Andel, you're first. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. So if we if we put uh, roughly half the money toward the Essex streetscape, it's 37,000 a year we save in interest charges over 20 years. So it's so we would save $750,000 in interest charges if we put this 500. Extra. Through the chair, that uh, that included principal payments as well. A total debt payment savings of 37,000, including princip that principal and interest. Principal and interest, but it would be put this 500 away now and uh, 750 ahead long-term over 20 years. to look uh, and I could provide you specific numbers. Um, I don't have that handy right now. The, the total was 37,000. So. Well, times 20, it's about yeah. you know, 740. So yeah, that would be accurate. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I think you had your hand up next. That we, um, that we use the 500,000 to reduce the streetscape debt, but I'll make that motion once everybody's if you can come back to me. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Bjorkman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, I, I, I'm not in favor of putting anything uh, on the debt. I think uh, when you have monies that come in that, that aren't accounted for, we've built a budget already um, that, that's been presented to us that we are happy with the, the mill rate increase that we've uh, discussed was going to come before us. Um, we have already got the Essex streetscape built in there with financing and, and the rates, and we were going to do this. Now we find that we have $911,000 on top of that, that we can use towards uh, our town needs. So it's hard to find almost a million dollars when you've got big projects on the horizon. So I would prefer to say, when, when we use the CIPs for, for our businesses in town, I would always tell them, you were going to spend X amount of dollars to fix your building up and do the work, regardless of whether or not you got a grant. So use the grant to do more. Use the money that comes in above and beyond what you had already committed to spending and do more. So I would love to see that $911,000 go into reserve for let's say Irwin Avenue. We've got big projects that need doing, that need big money, and you don't get these opportunities often. So uh, I, I think what we should be looking at is where can we put this money that's going to help us get those big projects um, that need doing in our, in our centers. And uh, Walnut is another example. It's uh, you know one of those two, but we need to start moving forward, putting money in the bank, to get those projects done or they're gonna languish uh, for years to come. Uh, so this, uh, something like this, I think we need to target it and, and put it at, to something in particular and not use it um, to offset other costs that we have already budgeted for and we know are coming. So I would leave this hole and put it into a reserve for one of our major projects. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Guerin, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with Councillor Bjorkman on the uh, fact that we have a long-term uh, debt strategy. We, we, we like that. I think it's, you've shown us that it's doable. This is newfound money in the sense, like uh, Councillor Bjorkman said, we can now utilize for a lot of the projects we, we are always speaking of. And I'm, I'm all in favor of leaving it in some sort of reserve. I'm about the roads and getting that type of stuff done. Our, our taxpayers can see that kind of work done. Um, I'm, I'm totally in favor of, of doing that for sure. Yeah, we're looking at, yeah, pretty close to a million dollars there. And I think, I think we are in a bit of a hurt, but I think a lot of hurt when it comes to um, our roads budgets. And, and this is a great opportunity. I mean, it just doesn't fall in your lap every day. So I'm in favor of that as well. Anybody else? Yeah, Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, no matter which way council goes at this point, I think is a win-win. Um, I, I am still cautious about the amount of debt that we're getting. And I, 
I don't really think it's been something that we've talked about a lot this term is debt and debt servicing. We've talked about it before in prior terms. And I remember us saying, you know, we want to get our debt down to 15 million. And here we are, 10 million. You know, I've been on council and we did get it down to close to 15, 16. And now we're up to like 24, 25 million. So I don't want to, you know, be at the moderate risk of, of debt. And we never know what project's going to come. Like we just spent in 2020, $600,000 on the Twin Pad Arena for emergency repairs. Like, I think it is nice having a little bit of a safety net. I, do, I know we have the landfill reserve, but we just took the money for the Harrow High School out of that. And I feel no matter what, we're always going to want to spend more money. We can spend money on roads. The roads are always going to, going to take money. We're never going to be caught up in roads. And that's just a reality we have to face. We've had three major projects this year. The Streetscape in Harrow, uh, or this term, Essex. Those, those are a lot of roads too. And then the, the fire hall. So I'm torn. I'd prefer it to sit there until the end of tonight's budget meeting and we can make a decision at the end of tonight. Um, I think that that's fair. And those are my thoughts I'm torn. Councillor Verbeek. Uh, thanks, Ms. Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, well, th yeah, this is almost a million dollars. So that's, that's pretty exciting. We should all be smiling a little bit more. I know it's a tough night for us, but uh, that, that's a little bit of good news. Um, uh, something that's been another little bee in my bonnet that I've been, you know, looking for a way to bring up with council and here seems to be a really good one. Um, for several years, I've been hearing about all the potential development coming to Ward 2, coming to um, McGregor, uh, developers that are on hold because of uh, our lack of capacity. And I just, and I'm wondering like, when are we going to, and it was one of the things I was going to bring to council, like, can we start earmarking some money to address this big, the, the, um, the sewage capacity in, in McGregor? If, if that is to address the issues that are, are holding these developers up that are, you know, they, 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 they're ready to move forward and, and uh, our infrastructure is holding them up. And I'm not seeing anything in this budget earmarked towards addressing that issue in uh, the McGregor Center. Maybe some of this coin can go towards that. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Anybody else from Council? <clears throat> Councillor Guerin, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Ms. Mayor, just, just quickly on the, a couple of years ago, we were approached about doing the streetscape and putting it to fruition. And at that time, we knew it had to go on long-term debt. And one of the concerns that I had was, was it gonna come at the expense of future road projects, which I didn't want it to get in the way of. We, we have that long-term debt set up now. We, you know, we can't have buyer's remorse two years later about this debt. We have, we, it's there. This is what we needed to do to do it. It's a, it's a legacy project. We're, we should be proud of it. And I think we, we are proud of it. But like I, my, I still come back to this, this, uh, um, this, this money. We, we'll make the decision as we go along here, and, and we have a million dollars there. And I think the right thing to do is to, is to put it towards these projects that we desperately need to have done. But let's let's forget about the streetscape and the long term debt. That, that that's that's a decision we did two years ago. Councillor Bjorkman. Yeah, so at this time, I'll, uh, I don't know if we have to move things or direct things, but that, uh, that we not uh, earmark $500,000 uh, to go towards the streetscape at this point, and we put this money, uh, as this is money that we should be looking at the end of our meeting to see what needs uh, we want to meet. I need a seconder for that motion. Uh, Councillor Van Endel. Any questions, uh, discussion? Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you through your worship. Can you guys hear me better? Yeah. Okay, I'm a little closer to the mic. That might be making the difference. So uh, earlier on, maybe uh, Councilor Brookman, you didn't hear me because you couldn't hear me through the mic, but I was making, I had said I would come back and make the motion that we would put that uh, against the debt once everybody had their conversation. I didn't want to make it oh, too okay. early. But, no. but since that happened, uh, through all the discussion, 
Um, I just didn't want to see that money spent in this year because there's not a project that we can spend it on that we can make happen in this year. We'd have to get into more debt. And I don't want to see us get into more debt this year. So um, by reducing the debt, it would give us an opportunity when a project like Irwin came up, it would still give us a $500,000 cushion in a future year. That's why I was saying put it against the long-term debt that we have right now. But in thinking about it, uh, short-term rates right now for long-term debt are pretty low. So we're probably better off if we're going to spend that 500 on road projects, regardless in the future, keep the 500,000, borrow it now at a, at a lower rate. Uh, because if you look at all the financial gurus out there, they're saying interest rates will go up. So uh, we're at all time record lows right now. Let's borrow the money now for the projects that we have this year. Keep the $500,000 in reserve for a project that's coming up, such as Irwin. The other one that I can think of that's going to be very expensive, and we're going to be probably hearing about it very soon here, is the Talbot and Maidstone intersection. We all know that that's a, uh, a, a big issue that's waiting to uh, see what's going to happen there. So uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with your motion at this point in time, even though I had said that earlier. I just didn't want to see us um, go into further debt in this year than what we already have committed to. So I just wanted to say that because some people did hear what I, what I had said earlier. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Guerin, then Councillor Van Gogh. That's you, Mayor. The other thing to point out and just remind everybody is as we put off these roads projects, every year it gets more and more expensive. So the cost of Irwin a few years ago at $2 million, I don't know what that's going to come in. I mean, but I, just looking at the everyday things and, and some of the stuff that's coming back to our council meetings on jobs we tender out, I mean, the, the longer we wait, the more it's going to cost. And when you have your long-term debt set up, you paid that cost now, and you've got really good rates right now that we can extend into the future. So I, I think it's an, I think it's an actual no-brainer to me. Nolan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, yeah, I too am concerned about that. That's why I brought up the uh, question at the beginning about how much it would cost us <clears throat> over the 20 years. Uh, that being said, um, there's no way I'd want to spend this money on operations, not not in a million years. But I mean, debt is a debt is a monster that that swallows your future. But so is a lack of infrastructure, and we've got some big holes in our infrastructure that that we should fill. That I think uh, we might plug a couple of those holes tonight. If things go well, and uh, so I will I will support this because. Um, we need to get some of this work done and this is a great opportunity. And as the deputy mayor said, uh, we're not going to be facing lower interest charges in the future, far from it. So I'm on side, thanks. So we had um, Councillor Bjorkman made that motion. Was there a seconder on that? Did you, deputy? Uh, Councillor Van Andalen did. So all in favor of that. That's carry. thank you. At this point, we will begin going section by section through our proposed capital budget. So you will see here uh, the first section being uh, council cost center. These are the two legacy projects that were just mentioned uh, in conversation. Uh, any questions on these specific projects? The next section would be Office of the CAO. There's three projects for consideration there. Any questions from council on the three projects highlighted under Office of the CAO? Councillor Verbeek, go ahead. Oh, thanks. I'm just wondering where the widening is for the sidewalk at the at the municipal building, like be just like widening the whole sidewalk or is there, there's a lot of sidewalk there. Uh, 
Okay, Doug, can you answer that? Yeah. Go ahead. To your worship, Councillor Verbeek, yes, it's along the side and a little bit in the front of the building. Um, it doesn't meet the current standards, so we're looking at meeting it to meet the standards for accessibility. And it's totally funded through other revenue sources, so no um, impact on the taxation. Okay, so that answers that. Good. Any other questions? Okay, Kate, go ahead, continue. The next capital uh, project is under the division of police. It is a $25,000 contingency project. Any questions on this? Through the chair, the next section is corporate services. And uh, you will see that there are six projects being presented for consideration under information technology. Uh, also under this is the uh, town hall capital project uh, that is funded through the ICIP grant program. Any council questions on these projects? Councillor Bjorkman, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you and, and to admin, I just want to be clear, we're not really engaging all six of these. We're just looking at the ones that are 22, because did we not already pass that we will follow through with anything passed already in 19 and 20 and 21? Through the chair, that is correct. So you'll note that there's a 2021 approved budget column. However, if there is a project cost noted in uh, the 2022 proposed project project cost column, it means it's an additional ask. So you'll note that town hall, now we've included the grant funds to be received. Uh, that was communicated to council, but anything in the, in the 2022 proposed capital budget project cost column means it's an additional ask. Thank you. Anybody else? No, go ahead, Kate. Through the chair, the next section is uh, Division Fire under Community Services. For a total 2022 project cost of 1.653 million, I would ask council if there's any questions on these specific fire capital projects. Councillor Van den Dolan, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh Yes, uh, thanks to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, didn't we just take delivery of a brand new fire truck uh, about a month ago and now we're buying another one next year? Uh, is that the cadence? Through you, your worship. Uh, yes, we bought a new uh, engine for station two. Uh, and we replaced one out in station three and we're moving as you, uh, I sent to council, you got a copy of our uh, apparatus deployment schedule. And uh, what we're going to do next year is the uh, aerial device. We need to replace it as we have two currently today, which are uh, well over the 20 year old mark. And we're gonna just purchase one and get rid of two vehicles. So we'll be decommissioning a vehicle next year and going down to 10 pieces of apparatus. Thank you. Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you. I want to thank the chief and the fire department for that uh, list of trucks. It's really helpful getting a, a visual. And I looked at that list and I was quite impressed after the next two. It looks like we're in pretty good shape. I'm pretty proud of the team and how they cycle through the, the trucks in a very responsible and safe manner. Um, I'm pretty proud of our fire department too. I was reading a, another municipality, one of their fire trucks and their parade had to they had to grab a fire extinguisher and I was talking to some of our firefighters and they said Essex, uh, the town of Essex does do a great job in giving us good equipment. So that's really important. I think uh, spending money on protections and to persons and people is a really uh, one of our strong suits. So thank you, Chief and Deputy Chief. Good, anybody else? Okay, Kate, go ahead. The chair, the next section under community services is that of parks. It flows over onto page 45. Uh, you will note that the 
total ask under parks for 2022 is $1.4 million. Any questions at this point from council on the proposed projects that fall under parks? Councillor Garen, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm still going to circle back to um, the $325,700 for the light replacement on Diamond One. Um, I know that we we don't put a whole lot of money into the into the diamonds, um, but we're talking about the lights here and the reasoning to switch them over was to go to LED because when we a light goes out or a couple lights go out, there's some costs associated with bringing a lift in and such. I just we're just not financially in the position, I don't believe, to put three hundred twenty some thousand dollars towards lights this year. Um, I'm okay with uh, getting an inventory on what needs to be replaced and fixing them all in one shot. Um, if we can pull, you know, we still don't know the future of what's going on with the sports field and, and how this field's going to all play out, but I just don't want to put that kind of money towards those lights this year. If we could use that money elsewhere, whether it's a project in any of the other wards, I'm okay with, with wherever the money has to go, but I just don't believe we, we need to do that this year. Good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jake, if you, uh, like to. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, a couple things to touch on the baseball diamond lights. Uh, one of the additional reasons why the lighting project was recommended is because we had a situation this year where a ballast blew and the, they were smoking. So we were actually uh, shut down for nearly a week uh, for our user groups. So that's uh, kind of where this uh, started stemming along. I did also receive, so the initial quote that was uh, presented was from a lighting uh, contractor that specializes in stadium lights. So uh, through addition, through the past couple of weeks, I've been working with some other additional local uh, contractors. They did say that they're confident that the project could be done for $200,000. So uh, that will change the uh, pricing in the uh, spreadsheet um, for consideration. Larkman, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, and uh, thank you to Mr. Morissette. Um, yeah, I'd sent him uh, a, a letter earlier, and just same concern as you, Councillor Garen, that uh, you know it's it's a, kind of a couple of lean years here, and now we're going to go out and spend you know three hundred thousand uh, dollars to replace lights at the at the ball diamond. But this ball diamond is a well used diamond. I have some concerns as well as far as COVID and what the next. Um, variant is going to be and you know was that going to shut us down in the summer is that but we can't we can't plan to not provide services for our town we have to plan to provide them and uh, yeah something could come by and, and, and cause us a problem but, but we need to be prepared uh, to be able to service them um, so the whole idea that we're going to need to change these lights out we are going to save on, on the operations of them and they will be lights that we will use regardless if the ball diamond is there or when we eventually move the ball diamond to the new home of our, our sports fields. Um, but as we look at uh, the way we're going to introduce those sports fields, it's going to start with soccer fields. And that ball diamond is going to be there, I would say, um, you know, easily for five years, maybe more than that. Um, the machinery, I, I had asked if we could maybe do it in phases, can we do a bank of, of, of uh, lights or can we do them as they go out? Unfortunately, like you know, the weight of the machine and the size of the machine that needs to be brought in to do these, it really does pay to do this all at once. So I had some concerns with those as well, but looking at the long term and uh, where we are and the fact that this does come from Life Cycle Reserve, this isn't coming out of taxes for this year. This money is already in that reserve. And if we don't use it to do it now, it stays in the reserve until we're until we do it. So um, it doesn't affect our bottom line. And I believe that uh, what Jake has presented to us is the right time to do these things. So uh, I, I am in support of it after looking into this more. Thank you. You're next. Councillor Verbeek. Hello, Councillor Verbeek. Can you hear me? No. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. I'm, 
I can now. I'm. Oh, no, I'm on. Can you hear me now? Hear you. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry for t whatever reason. I I don't typically have problems with the internet, but a lot often when you, other members are speaking, it's cutting in and out for me. So uh, I'm just going to jump in right here. Uh, clearly, I came tonight hoping to find some funds to put away for a splash pad in McGregor. And it sounds like Mr. Morris that just uh, found 125,000 that aren't earmarked for anything yet. Am I correct? Or like there was a lot of cutting out, but did the price of those lights just go down to 200,000? And yeah. I'm gonna be asking on every opportunity to earmark some funds for the splash pad in McGregor. And I, I think I just heard one. So I, I'd like clarity, please. Okay, uh, Councillor Verbeek, I, I know um, I'm, I'm in favor of splash pad too. And McGregor, you know that we, we spoke, you and I spoke on that issue, but you know, we're, we're going in conversation with the town of Amherstburg too, eh? So, you know, that, that's, that's going to be happening. And uh, we know that a lot of Amherstburg residents, a lot of kids use that, going to be using that splash pad too. So, um, I know it's going to come, but we got to be patient with Amherstburg. But I'll, I'll have Doug speak on this, and then thank you, Worship. Maybe. Just as a clarification to Councillor Verbeek, um, if the quote did come in cheaper, as uh, Manager Morset uh, stated earlier, that funding comes from the asset management plan. The splash pad would be new, so that funding could not be used for that. So that kind of goes back what Director uh, Drusevich mentioned before. We have to make sure with the funding, it's just not as easy as moving it. Also, I'll have the mic if I can at this point, just for clarification in terms of moving forward in the process. When we're talking about a capital project, if we can list the project just so everybody knows which one, including the public, and then for administration, we'll assume it's left in the budget at this time, unless council takes a vote to take it out, just as we move forward as there's discussion. From council on anything here? Uh, Councillor Van and Dolan, you were next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, actually, this isn't. This is a little bit off topic. But this is back to the sound quality. Uh, you know, it's become kind of a joke that whenever I hear have a problem, that it's my my internet connection because it's Starlink for some reason. But I believe the problem is at town hall. There's a clipping. It's like when when the mayor starts speaking, I miss the first five words every time. I don't know if he's pushing the button late. Uh, when Councillor Verbeek was just speaking, she froze three times. Um, no one else was freezing, so I think that was her internet connection. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of words are being missed along the way here, um, and I guess the problems are shared among us. I just wanted to point that out uh, to our technical people. Thanks. Uh, who was next here, uh, Councillor Garen? You were next. Um, okay, thank you. Through you, yeah, just on under the project number on my page, there's a whole bunch of them. They all are CS-22 and then a whole bunch of X's next to it. So that's why I didn't refer to an actual project number because I they're not identified. They're all the same. I apologize, um, Councilor Garon. <laughs> no, no problem. The, um, the, so yeah, the money comes from, I don't really care where the money comes from. We all know it's got to come from somewhere and whatever we can use that money for, I just thought it'd be, be a good opportunity to put it towards more of a need. If Jake's telling us that these ballasts are burning down and they're, they're a safety problem and, and they're, and we're, how many out were last year? Did we have, do we have to replace like 10 last year? One, two, like how often are we going out there and replacing them? I, I mean, I've played there for years and ran leagues there for years. I understand the lighting is not the best. They've been there a long time. We don't owe, they don't owe us anything. I'm just looking at the, like the use at nighttime for those lights is, mostly football at this time is and a little bit of baseball and yes everyone has to have safety we're gonna put new fencing around there and that but i mean my gosh I, we just hear so many different need like we just we just heard about our tennis courts i if i got one call that they loved it i got two more that said what's why are you spending money on tennis courts so i just want if we're gonna spend three hundred thousand plus dollars i just want to make sure that it's a need that's all but how often jake are we going down there and having to fix lights like how many were out last year through you, Mr. Mayor, we probably had uh, five lights that went out last year. 
um, including the ballast that knocked out the entire light panel. So uh, luckily that was at one period of time where a lot, we had one or two that were out and they were in a position where we could hold off on doing it right, right at that particular time. So we were able to group them all into one, uh, one situation. Um, so that was the only time this year. In previous years, I do know there have been times where we've had to pull the machine out uh, twice, uh, which again, bringing out the uh, lift is approximately $2,000 uh, just to get that there. Um, the other concern about having a lift there is that the ground has to be very, very firm because it is a very, very heavy lift. So if we get a panel or a bank of lights that go out and uh, we do need to get those repaired uh, or replaced, the concern is that if it had recently rained, it could be weeks before we can actually get out there to actually replace those lights. So that is one other uh, concern from administration's end for council to consider. Right, but it's also, just in touching on that, that's also been the case since day one since we've had them, right? That's it's correct. always been the case that's weather permit and when you can get in there and fix them, yes. That's okay, correct. thank you. Thanks for clarifying. I have one other thing for council. Um, this facility is also used not only for baseball, so it's been used five days a week basically from September, but for the last three years, Windsor Minor Football and the Essex Ravens have also used this all fall. This is a heavily used on the lights. Council is aware it's probably about a nine month operation that we are getting use of the lights. Thank you, Doug. Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know that we, uh, we keep talking about waiting for the, the plan, the McGregor strategic plan. What is the update there? Because as a, as a councillor that's not a mayor or deputy mayor or the ward, to counselor, I, I haven't heard any action since we said, you know, um, we want McGregor to have a strategic plan. There's been no update. And so from my past experience, I feel like this is going to go on for another year and another year and another year. And then, you know, we really have no, uh, no plan for McGregor. I did take some time and I really read through the parks and rec master plan. And I feel like, like I would sacrifice the bathrooms in Harrow by the splash pad the Harrow community is pretty, pretty happy right now with council's generous purchase of the high school and green space. So, you know, we could do without our bathrooms. Is there any way we can get uh, the splash pad in McGregor in this, in this term of council? And what's been going on with the Cohen Park meetings? Like, has there been meetings with the, the mayor, the deputy mayor in, in Amherstburg? Or are we just still at a standstill? Your Worship, um, I have brought forward to council previously that I have attended the Coan Park meetings, have talked with their committee when Amosburg reps are there. And what was happening this year in 2021, there was a survey, topographic survey done. So in 2022, a master plan of Coan Park could be completed. So then you know where playgrounds, splash pads, trails, et cetera, all have a plan and budget can be put towards those plans. Um, the Coan Park agreed with that, being the Essex reps and the um, Amherstburg reps, and we've been moving forward with that. Okay, so just to follow up then, so no splash pad for McGregor in 2022, and what exactly, I still think we can do it in 2022, but that's me being the optimist, and what, what exactly do we have in budget earmarked for that splash pad right now? If, uh, if Director Drusevich knows, please. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have followed up with the town of Amherstburg. They currently have no funds set aside for a splash pad. However, they're in their budget deliberations or putting that in their 2023 forecast. Based on our last budget, we have the town of Essex has 240,000 put in reserve for a splash pad. And also make council aware anytime you do a splash pad or any capital project, once it's built, there's cost. There's operating cost after that, and based on the Essex, we were averaging about thirty to thirty-five thousand per year, and that'd be another thing we'd have to work out with uh, Amherstburg, where those funds would come on an annual basis. Okay, uh, thank you. And through you, Mr. Mayor, just to Director Sweet, one last question: the McGregor Community Center. Did the town of Amherstburg pay for half of that? Because no, working at the library, it's it's all a lot of Amherstburg residents. 
your worship, uh, they did not pay for half of the capital, but I'm going to say approximately five years ago, we did meet with their administration and we came up with an agreement where they pay a percentage annually. And that's worked out well because it, you're correct. They do have a large portion that use that facility. Okay. Thank you. Burger Beak. Through you, Mr. Mayor. And um, uh, I appreciate the segue, Councillor Bondi. And no, uh, we did not practice this, but it, it's going to sound like it. I appreciate those questions because it's going to lead right into my next request. I'm going to keep trying for this splash pad because there isn't a lot for McGregor. And I'm going to use Councillor, uh, or our CAO gave me a good, uh, um, a good line to use here. Let's, um, let's put some money away and show we got skin in the game. And so we do have 241,000 uh, in the reserve. When this master plan is uh, finally complete, we know from parks we put in, that's a splash in the bucket. And Coan needs a big accessible equipment. It, it needs a splash pad. It needs a, a basketball courts. It needs skateboard park. It's not gonna get all of those in one year. But once this master plan is finally done, like, and now we hear we're looking past 2022 into 2023, it'd be really excellent if we didn't have to fight for a little bit of coin here and there, if we had a good reserve to say, let's start addressing these master plan issues. So I heard at our last discussion, Councillor Bondi offered up the $133,000 for the public bathrooms at Harrow since Harrow has got so many goodies. And I'm gonna make the motion that we move that into the reserve with the, you know, the 200 that's already there for our Coam Park Reserve Fund for after this master plan is complete. Um, I, I have to keep asking um, and I'm sure you all understand why. So I'm gonna make that motion. And, oh. and I did speak to Kate about it and she said that it can be done because it's, uh, you know, apples and apples and oranges and oranges. I'm not asking for money from the wrong fund this time as I did with Joe's lights. Um, oh. uh, she said it's movable. So from Councillor one Verbeek, fund to Councillor Verbeek mm -hmm. I may ask you, where, where's, where's this $133,000 coming from? Are you saying take away from the uh, new build washrooms in Harold? Yes, yes, and that, uh, how that's can we do, my motion. Uh, council, council already proved that. That's already been passed. In the, in the past, hasn't it been? Go ahead, Kate, because, I, you know, I, we fought for I washrooms. And I, I understand where you're coming from, Councillor, but we already earmarked money towards washrooms in Harrow. Where, 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 where are we going to, where are we going to have the, uh, the residents use washrooms in? We're at. So, okay, I'll leave it to Kate. Go ahead, Kate. I yes, can... through, the, oh, through the chair, just a point of clarification for council. Uh, there was $133,000 remaining from the project uh, that was going to be used in 2022 to complete it. And a, an additional ask of, an additional ask of 70,000. That is funded from the Parks and Rec General Reserve, as well as 44,700 and 63 funded from taxation. So through council resolution on the tracking sheet, they technically could make that resolution to reallocate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I may just add, yep. okay, to Councillor Verbeek, we, we already, Councillor Bondi brought this up months ago about washrooms uh, at the splash pad in Harrell, okay? So now we're asking to move money from that project to splash pad in McGregor. Okay, I agree 100% with the splash pad in McGregor, but something that we already t spoke about in a need in Harrell for washrooms at the splash pad, and now we're going to take that money. And in other words, forget about the washrooms. I'm not getting this. In other words, forget about the washrooms at the splash pad and move the money into McGregor, okay, for the splash pad and forget about the washrooms. That's what we're saying. If, can I, I don't clarify? You? Oh, and I will try and clarify it for you. But um, yeah, yes, indeed. Essentially, the project, C, the you know, CS twenty one zero zero four three. I'm asking that we take those funds and move them into the reserve for the Coan Splash Pad, just as we do at every budget deliberation. 
and we move these proposed these projects around. It happens every budget that I've been involved with. And in this case, uh, we do have splash pads that don't have bathrooms, but um, there is potential for other bathrooms in Harrow. And Harrow is, as you well know, gotten a huge portion of this year's budget and, and it's wonderful and I'm, I'm really glad for them but I'm trying to funnel a bit of funds back into the McGregor community and our 20 you know 700 residents would you know benefit from having a little fund put away so that when we can address um, some of the shortages at Coan Park there's money put away uh, we do it with all the other projects I mean I think that's what what we're here to do tonight right uh, is to give and take a little bit. And I'm just, and I did speak to Kate and it is a, you know, a doable swap. As she said, the funds can come from the one and it, it's not, I'm not saying to put it off indefinitely. I'm saying maybe it can be delayed. The people in McGregor have been promised the splash pads since 2013 and we keep giving them um, lip service, but we're not actually putting skin in the game. And this here is, is doing that. So yeah, that that's my request. I I just need a second, and we can go to vote. You were next, Councillor Bondi. You were next. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to second Councillor Verbeek's motion so we can have a proper discussion on it. If if I could, I'll second it, and then. I would say the residents in Harrow have had a splash pad since 2010. And yes, it would be nice to have a bathroom. At the same time, we, I will, I will bear the brunt of this if it does go through. We did get the high school and that was a hefty purchase. So we understand that we are a ward system and there's a little bit of a give and there's a little bit of a take. And I think it's McGregor's turn to have a little bit of money put in the basket. I've watched the budgets and I've analyzed and added up which different wards have received over the over the term. And at one point, you know, I think McGregor was getting a flagpole. So if we can put a little bit more in the budget for McGregor, and maybe the plan is with, with Amherstburg is we do the splash pad, they do the playground. Because my fear is we're going to be waiting a long time for McGregor. The next term of council will have some big decisions to do with Coam Park and what they're going to want to do with McGregor without McGregor because McGregor is growing. It's a great community and it's frankly has a bigger population than Harrow. So I'm in favor of that. Thank you. Chair, just for council's uh, information, to date costs have been incurred on the Harrow washrooms of $16,078. Uh, Councillor Bowman, go ahead. Thank you, and through your chair, a um, couple comments here. I, I, we we keep talking about it's it's McGregor and Harrow. The it's really Coan Park because it's not McGregor. It's Coan Park, which is jointly operated by the town of Essex and the municipality of Amherstburg. It's two different items. If you look at the uh, Harrow situation, that is wholly owned and wholly operated by the our municipality. The the Coan Park has to be an agreement through the Coan Park Group, and uh, both the town of Amherstburg and the town of Essex has to come to the table and uh, make it work. Um, and I don't want to see our taxpayers throwing money. Uh, one sided at it and not getting a, a similar turn from the other side. It, it's not fair for our people, and it, it's certainly not uh, fair for the people in McGregor either, because uh, at this time they're being kind of shortchanged because they're not getting these things. So I think it's, it's more important that we get these agreements in place with Amherstburg to make this park what it should be. And I don't have a problem putting money in reserves to do these things, but uh, going ahead on projects without the, the buy-in by the Amherstburg group is really not uh, a sensible approach to doing it. 
uh, it has to be on a joint basis. Uh, we took a gamble on the, the uh, lab, I'll say the library complex in, in McGregor, and we uh, basically footed the bill to build it uh, in, in that situation. Now, I believe we have some operating uh, it, uh, agreements with Amherstburg or support. That's uh, a plus. And I think as Amherstburg comes to the plate, we will be able to do things, uh, especially at Coan Park, because um, if, if we cut those people out the, the, on the other side of the road, so to speak, from using it, then it's, it's, it's really not a, a community park. So I think we really need to get down and get this uh, agreement with Amherstburg negotiated and see how we move forward. And, um, uh, you know, if we put money into reserves to do projects, as soon as that's in place, that's great. But uh, I think that agreement has to be in place first. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Councillor. Councillor Guerin, go ahead. So you're Mayor, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I'm all in favor of putting some money aside for, for that splash pad. Um, and uh, we will do a master plan and there's no doubt that the splash pad will, is going to be in that for sure. Uh, my concerns are the same as Councillor Bowman's. I mean, we need to really get Amherstburg on record that they're willing to put in for this because it's a joint effort. We can't, I don't think we can do it and then charge them back and have them pay over years or anything like that. So they need to come on board. They need to, to be on the record that they want to be there. But we can put money aside, surely. And I think we may be able to find those monies, Councillor Verbeek, somewhere tonight, maybe somewhere else. But I mean, we've already talked about nearly a million dollars of money that's, that's possible. Um, that's come up. So um, my position, oh, and I'm not sure, did, I've only been on council for this one term, but I don't remember ever making a promise of a splash pad to McGregor or to the Coan Park. But if we did, I, I, I don't recall it, but I still believe that, that they deserve one. Um, back to the washrooms at Harrow, my position hasn't changed on them. I mean, I think it'd be a big disservice if we pulled that from them. Um, it's one thing to take monies and move them around from a, from a want to a need. We do that all the time. We do. We look at something and say, you know what, we can put this off another year or two. It's, it's really more of a want than a need where over here we have a need, but we're all talking about swapping out a need for a need here. And I don't think we can take the money from there and move it over to somewhere else. Um, but I think we can find the money and I'm hundred percent behind the project council to speak. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Garen. I, I, you know, Councillor Verbeek, I hope you understand that council is behind you 100% with a, a splash pad in McGregor. Like I said before, you and I spoke on this issue many times. And, uh, and I've talked to all, uh, most of all the council on, on the splash pad in, uh, in McGregor. But we have to get Amherstburg on side too. And, and Councillor Garen's right. I, I think we can find some more money to put in into that project, into reserves for that project. We have, uh, how much put away? Uh, 240 right now. I'm sure, to, uh, may, maybe not tonight, but next uh, budget meeting, whatever, we can find some money to put in there. Is McGregor going to get a splash pad? Absolutely. Uh, is it going to be in this budget? Don't know. We have to get Amherstburg on board. So and we all know that there's a lot of residents, a lot of kids from Amherstburg that will be using it. It's quite obvious at Coan Park uh, that a lot of Amherstburg residents use the Coan Park facility. So we have to get them on board, period. So um, Councillor Van and Dolan, you are next, then Councillor Bjorkman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, yes, I, I agree with you and Councillors Garen and, and Bowman. I, I, I think we need, we, we need to trust a bit here, Councillor uh, Bowman's uh, extensive experience on this this sh shared um, experience with Amherstburg. I mean, I mean, I'm in favor of a splash that pad there too, although not as enthusiastically as some others. I, I just wonder how many, I mean, I'm sure lots of people from the growing Amherstburg side will use it, but I'm not sure how many of our seniors from the trailer park will use it, but anyway. Um, but we shouldn't be putting the money away before we have the deal. And as Councilor Bowman says, that's, the history shows that we've got to do that first. Um, so, yeah, that's where we are. Uh, that's it. Thanks. And then Deputy Mayor Melange. Yeah, 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and through you, I want to speak to the motion. The motion is to take the money that we were going to spend on the washrooms from Harrow and move that uh, to the McGregor splash pad. And I'm not in favor of the motion. Uh, I think it's important for us to finish uh, the job we've started in Harrow. It's taken us a long time to get to where we have change rooms and washrooms. And I remember being a young father with two little girls and trying to uh, get them to a washroom when they were out playing and the, the, the conversation has been, well, perhaps, you know, if we develop the high school and we can get washrooms to be close there, they can use the arena. We all recall when you had the, the, the basket and the bag and the one kid that had to go and the other kid that couldn't walk and you're trying to get to the washroom, it's, a, it's quite a chore. Um, so I think that that building that we're looking at, putting the washrooms and change rooms in for the Harrow Splash Bed is perfect. It's right there. It couldn't be better. Um, now with the with the uh, tennis courts there set up, um, it's it's going to be used constantly. It's the right thing to do. We've already started spending money on it. The plan is done. Let's finish it. So, are we all in favor of, of a splash pad in in uh, in McGregor? We we all have said yes, we are. Uh, but we need our agreement. The the uh, strategic plan, the the master plan, is coming down next year. It'll be two years before that splash pad goes in, and that's when it's going to be. Uh, but this year, we need to finish uh, the job in Harrow. Thank you. Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Malash, you're next. Through you, Your Worship. And I just want to say that uh, Councillor Bowman eloquently said that, uh, eloquently said uh, what uh, the whole vision should be with, with uh, Coan Park. It's a shared park. Uh, one time it was uh, Colchester North and Anderton Townships that actually purchased the property. Both their names were on the deed and when amalgamation happened back in the late 1990s, early 2000s, uh, it became the town of Amherstburg and the town of Essex that had their names on that deed. So those two, to those two towns own that piece of property combined. Um, and every everything that uh, is done at that Park. I, I sat on that board for a very long time. I've even sat on the on that board prior to being on council. So I know the situation there. Um, and there's been ups and downs with the relationship with Amherstburg as far as the expenses of that park go. I think we're moving into a better situation now. I think our administration has a good relationship with the administration of Amherstburg at this point in time. And I believe that it's, it's only gonna get better over the next few years. I think that with this master plan, we should have some good cooperation and we should have some good things happening at Coan Park, something that hasn't really happened in, in recent times. So uh, I think we need to be patient. We need to wait for this to happen. Um, splash pads can be expensive to operate once they're in operation. If we want buy-in from Amherstburg, to pay for half of those costs and operational costs on that splash pad. We need to have them have buy-in on the asset itself. So I think, I really believe that we need to do that. As far as the motion, oh, as far as the splash pad goes, uh, someone was asking, I don't remember, Councillor, about the agreement. I think it was Councillor Guerin. Uh, back in 2010, I believe it was, or 2009, uh, we agreed to have splash pads in all four uh, wards. We started off with putting the first one in Harrow. Uh, I think it was right around the time the arena was going into Essex and we thought this would be something that would be, um, rather than putting it in Essex Center where we had the most people that would use it, we put it in Harrow, the first one, to kind of counterbalance. There was an arena going in Essex. We didn't want everything going into Essex. So, so we thought, thought we'd start with Harrow with a splash pad. That was the argument at the time. And then we went to Colchester instead of going to Essex Center because of the pirate ship that was being built there and part of our tourism strategy. So we went with that one second. When we went to go for the third one, didn't all happen in that term of council. It kept getting pushed out and we kept starting with the save reserves. It ended up being that it was a few years later and here it is almost, uh, you know, 13 years later almost now, uh, we still haven't got the fourth one. And when all of those were supposed to happen in four years. I think the splash pads were more expensive than what we thought they were originally going to cost us. And that was one of the reasons why we spread them out so far. So in any case, yes, we did determine way back in 2008 or 2009 when we first started looking at splash pads, 
that every ward would have a splash pad. It was something that each community deserved to have. So um, going to Councillor Bjorkman's point, um, the, 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 the motion on the floor right now is really about uh, moving monies from the washrooms at the splash pad in Harrow to Coan Park usage. And I believe that we should be keeping in mind that those washrooms are needed. I am the grandfather of six young grandkids. I can tell you from taking them to different splash pads that yes, those washrooms are needed. And I'm hoping that we go forward and move and build those washrooms as soon as possible. Thank you. You're next. <clears throat> yeah, three mayor, just to, <clears throat> thanks for that clarification. Uh, Deputy Mayor. So the, the variable though on the McGregor situation is that we're deciding now to put it in the Cohan Park, which is jointly owned. That's the variable and that's the problem. If we were saying back in 2010, all four centers should have a splash pad, nothing stopped us from putting that splash pad somewhere else in McGregor other than Cohan Park. But because somewhere along the line, we've decided it belongs at Cohan Park, that is our issue. So I just wanted to clarify that, right? Always in, uh, uh, always proposed to go into Cohen Park, uh, Councillor Garen. So, just to verify what you're you're asking, there it was always to, that was the spot it was going to go in, and that still is the spot. Okay, then. With that being said, back in 2010, did we have the discussion with Amherstburg and let them in on the on our plan? And did they say, yeah, that could happen or it couldn't happen? Just looking for more clarification on it. Do you recall? They weren't interested at the time. Yeah, they were not interested at the time. Okay, and we'll go to uh, Councillor Verbeek. You're next. You know, okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, thanks through you, Mr. Mayor. And I'm going to thank all of Council for this discussion. And clearly, I'm going to pull my motion. But I do have comments because I think, again, we need some clarity. So about, uh, um, yes, Joe, two years ago, I asked, can we just put, uh, can we give McGregor a splash pod somewhere like outside of Cohen? Apparently there's, there's uh, nowhere for that to happen. But I want council to understand and our CAO can, um, you know, clarify if I, you know, if needed, but that, that history that our deputy mayor spoke to that was, um, you know, up and down and, uh, you know, never uh, the same amount of buy-in from each town. Uh, we're moving forward in a very good way. And that's, that's why I am feeling so strongly about at least, you've heard me every year, that every budget asking for money for Cohen Park. And the answer is always, well, it, it doesn't matter. It's contingent on, on Amherstburg, so we can't. So it's, um, but now we're moving forward with Amherstburg and I want this to be clear. The, the strategic plan is being done and it's um, the consults that it's, uh, you know, the input is being received to prioritize the projects that both towns will support in the, in the strategic plan. Those projects are being received from the Coam Park Committee that is made up from residents of Amherstburg, residents of Essex, a municipal, uh, uh, an elected official from Essex, myself, elected official from Amherstburg, uh, Deputy Mayor Malosh, uh, Leo Malosh. We have put together our recommendations for this strategic plan that they'll be moving forward with. So yes, I am more hopeful than I've ever been that, that things will start moving forward in a positive way for Cohen. But then we come back to the skin in the game question. By 2023, I think one of you just mentioned in this, uh, you know, very good uh, conversation, we may be at a place to move forward with some of these long awaited projects. But if there's no money to do it, and I've heard so many numbers about the cost of these big, expensive, accessible park uh, equipment and uh, splash pads, and I believe it was like long before I was elected, Deputy Mayor brought me in on a committee to try and see if we could help raise funds to get uh, you know, better park equipment and co-ant. And then it was kind of roadblock because 
we couldn't very well do, you know, raise 200,000, 300,000 to put park equipment in if, if we didn't have uh, the mutual buy-in from the two towns. We're there now. And right now we're, we're, we're moving that way, but it's not going to do us any good if, the, uh, you know, all the, the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted Counsel in 2020. Councillor Verbeek, no Councillor Verbeek, I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but uh, uh, I know we kicked this around a lot. All the council. Right. I just wanted uh, I wanted okay, to clear up no. some misinformation out there about about that. That's the okay. committee's made up by members of both towns. Yeah. And uh, so we just need to put money away for it. Yeah. So so I my question to you, you want to withdraw your motion? Sure. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Through the chair. through the chair. Um, so at this point, are there any more questions on the parks section of the proposed 2022 capital budget of $1.4 million for 2022 projects? Go ahead. I'm getting out of here. Okay. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so just gonna quickly circle back to the, the lights again. We're not gonna make a decision night on that. And I just asked that uh, councillors do their homework between now and the next meeting and, and, and ask of Jake, ask of uh, that department, ask of Kate, if, if there's another way to get around it this year, if it has to be done, it has to be done, but I'm just asking everybody, it's 300 some thousand dollars that if we can use it somewhere else, I'd prefer to. Through the chair, any more questions other than the two um, projects uh, that have been discussed thoroughly at this point? Any other questions on parks section? Barring none, we will move on to the next division under community services being that of miscellaneous recreation programs. This begins on page 45, continues on to page 46. You will see that the total proposed 2022 project cost is $229,000. Any questions on the miscellaneous recreational program capital projects? Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the Parks and Rec Cultural Master Plan, I know that's a 2019 initiative, but do we just, the way I read the current master plan is we just update it every five years. Is that what I'm reading? Probably to our CAO. Correct. Every five years, you should update the master plan and that is what's in the budget. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead, Kate. The next division is Arena under Community Services. The 2022 proposed project cost is $658,000. Are there any questions on the projects within the Arena section? Go ahead, Councillor Garen. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Just if um, to uh, Director Morris said, can you tell us again about the netting around the rinks? What, the decision to replace them is just based on a yearly thing, or is it based on the condition of the net? Are we making the decision, or is the provider of the nets making the decision? Uh, I'm asking only because yes, safety for sure, and I know it's not a lot of money, and it may be. Uh, I think it's thirty-five thousand each each. Rena, but um, they rarely got used last year. So if it's a wear and tear thing with COVID, I mean, they, they rarely got used. So I'm just wanted some clarification for us all as to how that decision come down. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So we spoke with the uh, companies that provide the netting and it is always recommended at 10 years that that's the life cycle. They said uh, because of the temperature fluctuations in and out of uh, cold, the uh, the netting actually becomes a little bit more brittle each time and each year as it goes on. So uh, being uh, it's it's quite old at the Harrow uh, at the Harrow Arena, 
And uh, obviously it's a better deal to have all three done at the same time. So that would be the intention is to have all three uh, put up for tender, do it all at once uh, with one company. Um, it is uh, obviously past that 10 year uh, recommendation for uh, the Twin Pad Arena as well. So um, again, like I mentioned, or like you mentioned, safety, uh, we want to make sure that uh, because of that potential brittle, brittleness, if there's a deflection uh, or a puck gets shot into the stands, we don't want any sort of breaks happening. We have had some breaks that we have repaired uh, in-house uh, as well. Um, we just don't want to see it get uh, to that stage where it's becoming a safety issue for the public. Okay. And just to follow up then, so wear and tear of the net, use of the net is really not the determining factor or a factor at all. That's more for the safety of the net. And with that being a, a 10 year, I'm assuming that's something that our insurer looks at as well if we go past 10 years or no. Through Mr. Mayor, I, I can't speak to the insurance uh, aspect of it. I think that would be better suited for Mr. OJ, but there is definitely the factor of wear and tear as well. We, we do have patches and areas that have broken through. Again, we've, uh, we've patched those in-house. Um, just looking to more or less follow the recommendations of the uh, net companies. Um, if we end up having some sort of injury or situation and we were past that life cycle recommendation, uh, it could put us up for potential, uh, potential incidents that we wouldn't want to see. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Through the chair, the next sec section is the Essex Recreation Complex Cost Center. These projects are cost shared 50% with the school board. The total ask for 2022 is $617,194. Are there any questions on the capital projects in the Essex Recreation Complex Division? Thank you, through the chair. The next section uh, would be the division of Harbor. There are projects in total of $167,000 being presented. Are there any questions on the three proposed projects under Harbor? Anything uh, from council? Uh, Councillor B. Arkman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you and uh, to council, uh, when this when the initial walkthrough uh, of the budget went along and, and the lot B parking lot uh, paving was mentioned, there was a, a considerable gasp and and uh, <laughs> it was obvious that was not going through. So I think it's important that uh, we still do work in Colchester and up around the marina. There's some very important uh, things that need to be taken care of that are that are on the list still. So um, I came, I have a proposal uh, that uh, in not using uh, the $160,000 for that parking lot, that there are some other issues on our list. Now in keeping with what I suggested earlier is that we don't sit here and start trading horses um, at this point, but uh, I would agree that uh, the $160,000 be uh, set aside uh, for parking lot B and that we uh, take care of some other uh, jobs with that money. Uh, yeah, that was discussed at the, the last meeting. So, uh, Councillor Van Den Dolan, go ahead. We'll keep it short. I agree. Thank you. Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I think, do we need to make a motion to pull parking lot B out? Is that what we're doing? Because I thought like the items are status quo unless we, so if so, I'd like to make a motion that we pull uh, community service project uh, paved parking lot B out. Okay, that's your motion, a seconder for that one? Uh, Councillor Verbeek, all in favor? Carry. Thank you. Through the chair, at this point, just to make sure that 
the changes have been captured properly, uh, I'm just going to pull up our tracking sheet. Yeah, okay. I will do that right after we're done community services. As there's just one division remaining, the last division being arts, culture, and tourism. And there is one project presented for council consideration of $10,000. Just bear with me and I will share my screen to show the changes thus far. So at this point, what you can see is a reduction in the cost for the replaced lights at Essex Diamond One ballpark uh, based on the quote that our manager of community services received. It's estimated to come in rather than the 325,000, closer to 225,000. Updated that so that it's based on the most accurate price quote. Uh, the project that has been removed at this point is the paved parking lot B in Colchester and that was funded from the Contingency Community Services Reserve. And this is where there's also $911,000 of potential grant funding available for use for infrastructure projects such as roads, bridges, storm sewer, et cetera. So at this point, uh, we are through the community services and we will move on to uh, the next section being the development services. So beginning on page 47, you will see the department is development services and under division planning, there are two projects being presented for council consideration. And one of these projects being the new official plan is funded from taxation in the amount of $38,000. Are there any questions on these two projects? The next division under development services is economic development. Under economic development, there are three projects being for, presented for council consideration. Uh, one of these projects being the business retention and expansion program is funded from taxation in the amount of $30,000. Are there any questions on these three capital projects under economic development? Bjorkman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you, yes, I'm looking at the, uh, the two um, the business retention and expansion program and the agritourism implementation. Uh, so looking through the, the request, the request is to hire a consultant um, for the first one to develop a small business and retention program. Um, and then another consultant to uh, support continued agritourism implementation. So we have um, our economic development officer. We are hiring a student for economic development this year. And between these two um, consultants, we're gonna spend another, I think my total's right, $80,000. Uh, so that's the, the amount of money we're putting towards um, these two plans. Plans that uh, the agritourism one has a uh, has a grant tied to it, twelve thousand five hundred. So half of that one is is coming with the grant. And understand, we're hoping to get a grant um, for uh, the business retention one as well. Uh, at this point, uh, we're looking at the money we're spending on consultants and people we're, that we're bringing in. Uh, I just don't see um, where 
what we are doing right now, trying to hold the line and everything is, is spending another $80,000 on consultants. So I'm not in favor of bringing in these consultants unless we can get the money through a grant. If the grant funding comes through, then it doesn't need to be on our, on our, uh, on our budget. If the grant comes through, they, then we'll do the, we'll, we'll do the uh, reports. But if we don't get the grant, um, it's something that we continue to, uh, to work uh, in-house uh, at uh, developing. So at this point, I'm not in favor of those two budget items. Go ahead, Kate, if you wanna answer that. Through the chair, just a point of clarification on the funding models of those two projects. The business retention and expansion program, 25,000, where it is stated to come from other reserve, qualifies as a use of the COVID grant monies that we have on hand. We did verify that. Uh, so that one we have received uh, the grant monies for, it's, it is sitting in our reserve um, and the other 30,000 of it being funded from taxation. For the agritourism implementation, uh, the 12,500 would still need to be applied for to receive that grant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to council. In actuality, we have applied for the agritourism implementation uh, status of that grant application and hopefully we'll be receiving that. Just to clarify, however, agritourism the plan that was completed. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, I'm getting no and yes. Uh, I'll, I'll start over if that's okay. How's this? Okay, so agritourism implementation uh, is really implementation of action items in follow-up to our agritourism development strategy that was completed in 2021. So it's not a plan per se, but rather assistance from the same consultant that we used to prepare the plan to help us with these action items simply for resources. So additional resources, the expertise that uh, Culinary Tourism Alliance has uh, provided us and to continue down that path to implementing the action items that council approved under the agritourism development strategy. And uh, the grant application has been submitted for that 12,500 and hoping to receive that uh, in the near future. We hear that the province likes to see that the grant that's been applied for is for action items rather than a plan. So uh, we're pretty confident in obtaining that uh, grant for that project. And as Director Jerusevich has explained, uh, that project does not hit our bottom line from taxation. The business retention and expansion program, that is a plan that council has approved excuse me, council has identified in its strategic plan. So under council's strate strategic plan, it's something that you have identified as a council for us to complete. We simply don't have the resources with one economic development officer to complete that in-house. And that's why we have come forward with, a, in, with a, a funding model to have a consultant help us develop that for small business retention and expansion a strategy we have this, uh, say, process where we are quite reactive and sometimes proactive in engaging our business community. But we would like to undertake a formal process uh, to help us identify a, a, a program to improve our relationship with businesses, owners, managers, and identify and address any concerns uh, to help us improve business competitiveness. So this is where we hope to have that consultant help us, not a student. In this case, a student has, yes, during the summer assisted our economic development officer, Nelson Silvera, uh, with quite a bit of work during the summer months. But we are specifically looking for a consultant that has the expertise for business prevention and expansion to help us prepare that strategy. Again, as per council's direction to complete that work in this term under the strategic plan. Thank you. Councillor Bondi, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I kind of feel like we need to go forward with both. I mean, I think our agritourism is, is well off and running and it's not a huge amount of money to keep going. We have a lot of developing businesses down there that are relying on us to, to finish kind of what we started. And I really agree with the, the business retention and expansion. I believe that was a notice of motion back in 2018. 
uh, by yours truly, uh, because I think that, you know, we went to a conference and retaining businesses is just as important as getting new ones. And we're getting some big new Whopper businesses. I think though, at this, at the same time, some of our small, tinier businesses, especially in our urban course have kind of been those forgotten businesses. You know, I've, I get messages all the time from uh, business owners in, in both urban wards saying, you know, what do we have that we can talk to? And I think our town staff are busy. And, you know, for example, I've been asked to, you know, what is our hashtag? You know, what is our Instagram for the town of Essex? How can we promote, promote ourselves more on social media? And I even just sent out an email to council and everybody is just so busy. So right now it's, it's important that we celebrate and, and try to support our small businesses. Cause I have a feeling in the next year and a half, we're going to lose even more. And we're spending so much money in our downtown cores on our streetscapes. But this is kind of like the icing on the cake to push them through. We might as well, we want our downtown course to thrive now more than ever. And we put a big, big old chunk of money. So this is just a little bit more just to make sure they're okay. Councillor Bondi, any further comments? Councillor Vanderdoen? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm more sympathetic to one of these than the other, but you know, over a 40 year career as a reporter, I bet I was asked 300 times by, by citizens, taxpayers, why do governments spend so much on consultants? And uh, so now I'm, now I'm in a position to, to perhaps uh, affect that. Uh, the agritourism, yes, it's, you know, somebody, the province is paying half of it. I, I can go along with that and we have action items to go forward on, but the business uh, retention, um, spending $6 million on the downtown core, that'll retain a lot of businesses or 4 million on the other, uh, the other center. Freezing taxes for two years, that will retain and expand small businesses. Uh, keeping down uh, the red tape and regulations, that will go a long way too. But, but hiring another consultant to, I don't know what, hold, hold other people's hands. I, I just don't get it. I, I, I can't see it. I think the money would be better spent on, uh, on a few other things. So, uh, um, you know, I guess if I could, might be convinced, but uh, how long, how long a, a contract is this uh, small business retention thing for? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you to Councillor Vander Dolan. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, Vo actual... By the way, volume is never the problem. It's the clipping out where we don't hear you at all. Okay, so I'll sure. just take a quick pause uh, before I do speak. Uh, so it's the consultant would actually be retained not for the purposes of the action items, but rather to help us prepare the strategy so that we can move forward administration. So the contract really would be to help us prepare that strategy. I could see it happening with six to 12 weeks completion of that strategy. So similar in nature to what the consultant CTA completed for us in 2021, the uh, agritourism strategy. It took a few weeks, to, uh, maybe three months or so to complete that strategy. We're also going to be putting this out for RFP, no different in terms of reference. This is what we're looking for in a strategy. Uh, so the consultant would only be on hand for those short, that short duration, about three months or so. And we would then take it from there. Okay, thank you. From council? No. It is 6.49. Uh, we do have the meeting scheduled until 7.30. So uh, it is administration's goal that we would continue the meeting on through to 7.30. At this point, uh, we are through the Development Services uh, Department and we are moving on to the Public Works Department. The first division being that of equipment. The total project cost being asked is $516,000.
Are there any questions on the equipment division of Public Works? Go ahead. Through the chair, the next division being roads and roadside continues on to page 48. The total ask for 2022 being $2 million. Important to note that this division would qualify uh, as a use for the additional grant monies that were received in year. Any questions uh, on the roads and roadside section Chris, did you raise your hand? Councillor Van Andel, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, so Victor and the uh, Maidstone Arthur Gosfield, those are, are both going ahead. And uh, I thought there was a suggestion earlier that we'd be talking more about Maidstone Arthur tonight. Kevin, if you can answer that, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, both of those projects were, are actually carry forward projects from the 2021 budget. Uh, they're both moving forward. Uh, they've been delayed into the year 2022. So they will be, they are planned to be uh, constructed in the spring. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Anybody else? No. Go ahead, uh, Kate. Chair, the next section and final section of public works is there are an additional uh, request for 2022 in or, or new projects being presented of $1.1 million. Are there any questions on the stormwater management projects presented in this draft budget? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to um, our Director of Finance and Administration, are, are these projects all related to user pay, projects, user pay, rather than the general tax levy? Through the Chair, these projects were funded through various grant. We did not use the user pay reserve. Uh, we used the grant model uh, where normally one bridge is done per year, as well as one road with that grant monies. Any other questions? Okay, go ahead. Through the chair, we are now moving on to the user rate supported Department of Environmental Services. User rate meaning this is funded from user rate reserves. The total uh, project asked for the water division for 2022 that flows onto page 49 is $1.1 million. Are there any questions on the projects presented in water division? No, go ahead, Kate. Barring none through the chair, the next division is that of sanitary sewer, another user rate supported division. Total 2022 proposed costs equate to 1.17 million. Are there any questions on the sanitary sewer projects presented? Councillor Verbeek, go ahead. Through, the, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I'm just, I just have to ask: Is there ever a discussion about addressing the the uh, sanitary sewer? Like when we're making up the budget, do you look at putting money away for it, or is there is there a plan to address uh, to address that in McGregor in the future? Through the chair, uh, so we do have consultants that have developed uh, the waste and uh, wastewater plan for us uh, based on our current infrastructure. Uh, any of those growth related needs would be addressed through uh, the development charges study uh, in conjunction with our director of infrastructure services. So it's not a current asset, so it hasn't been addressed through here. Uh, 
as this is for current uh, water rate users or wastewater users. Questions? Go ahead, Doug. Your Worship, I think part of the answer you're looking for accounts for Beak. You don't see it in a lot of the town of Essex documents because those amenities and services we get from the town of Amherstburg. So again, we would have to work with them on uh, enhancing the capacity limits. And then further to that, uh, has has that conversation is is there a plan to have that conversation or has it happened or? Um, because I keep hearing it's the roadblock to the developments. So I'm just wondering, like, I if, thought that I, might be where it's addressed. If I can answer that for you, uh, Councillor Verbeek, yes, there is planned uh, discussion with the town of Amundsburg for capacity and expansion. So there is uh, there's plans in the work to, to meet with, with the town of Amundsburg. Anything else, uh, Councillor Bondi? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Can our uh, CAO and uh, Director of Development Services put it in their notepad or their book to bring back a first quarter report on that plan so that we can have an update on that plan so it doesn't hang there for another three, four years and we can have a, a benchmark and at least have an answer to developers and an answer to residents in council? Thank you. Do you worship to you, Councillor Bondi? Yeah, we can add it to our list to look at, but uh, we'd still wait for Amherstburg to have the proper administration in place to have those conversations. And, and when will that be? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you worship, I can't answer that. That's out of our hands. Yeah. Go ahead, Kate. Through the chair. So that brings us to the conclusion of recommended capital projects at this point. Uh, so just to do a recap, uh, at this point, we have removed the paved parking lot B uh, for $160,000. And we also have removed the traffic enforcement officer in operating for $190,000. There's also additional grant monies on the table of $911,000. That needs to be specific to an infrastructure project. So we will now, uh, sorry, I was just gonna refer to page 52, the council uh, and administration requested projects outside of the 2022 budget. And I just want to make a note that we have been in contact with the board at Coan Park. They are revising their forecast, and we will be updating this list with their revised forecast for final print. But at this point, uh, we would love to open up the floor to council for any projects, even not necessarily included on that list, uh, that they would like to see moved to the 2022 proposed capital budget. Council, uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Garen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you and to Council, I would like to address uh, the $160,000 that was uh, earmarked for parking lot B. Uh, as I said, I would like to, uh, I'd like to see uh, some of that stay in Colchester and address that same area because there are needs uh, in that area. Um, there is a, a estimate to do the harbor, uh, the down road, I can't call it the ramp, because every time we say ramp, people think it's where they're putting the boats in. But we're talking about the road that comes from the top of the hill at Sullivan down to the, the harbor uh, floor. Um, that road is, uh, is, is terrible. It's, uh, it's been beat up, lots of potholes. It gets tons of use all summer long. People just drive up and down that hill um, and uh, it really needs to be to be addressed. That has a, uh, a $70,000 uh, price tag on it. 
Um, the other thing is in the uh, wish list is a, a Colchester traffic study. Uh, Jackson Street, I'm sure as everybody knows, you've been out there during the summer um, with the diagonal parking now and boats and trailers and vehicles going in both directions and kids coming across from the park and uh, everything that's happening down there, we need to get a hold of that or, or we really do have an issue um, that's just waiting to happen to us there. So uh, I, I talked with Kevin, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Director Gerard, uh, with regard to a traffic study for that area to see what we can do um, to, to really get a hold of the amount of traffic that's happening there. That is earmarked at, at $20,000. That would leave uh, $70,000 there. And I would propose that we use that in Gesto to create the sidewalk from the Gesto Public School over to the Gesto Side Road. So those three items uh, would take uh, the amount that we had earmarked originally for parking lot B uh, and still get really good use uh, and, and uh, buy in from, from Colchester, but also be able to do uh, the sidewalk and gesto uh, that we've been uh, hearing about. And, and really, it's a school zone, it's a safety zone. Uh, so that would be my proposal uh, for the parking lot B funds. But actually, I'll, uh, I'll move that we take that $160,000 and use it for the gesto sidewalk, the, the Harbor Road, and the Colchester traffic study. Second. Can I get a supporter on that one? Councillor Van Endel, you support that? Any other discussion on that? Uh, Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. And um, I'm just looking at that uh, shave paved road, top of hill to lower level in Colchester. It's it's actually, did you say 75,000, Councillor Bjorkman? Because I think I see 75. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so it's 70, 75,000 here. So I don't know if that's a, a hard uh, estimate or if that's just a, uh, you know, like a, a really good quoted estimate or if that's just an estimate. There's $5,000 not accounted for. Answer that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Through you, through you Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to clarify uh, for Deputy Mayor Malosh. I did uh, revise the estimate for that uh, for Councillor Bjorkman. It can be done for seventy thousand dollars, so it can be reduced to seventy thousand for the for the roadway from the top of the hill to the bottom. Thank you for confirming. Good. Anybody else? Okay. So we had a, a motion and a, a seconder. Councillor Van Endel and second it. Um, all in favor of moving that money? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. Thank you all. Through the chair, I would just like to share my screen at this point to ensure the statement of uh, adjustment is accurate and what uh, everyone believes to be true after that motion. At this point, you can see the PAVE parking lot B project was removed for $160,000, currently sitting in contingency reserve CS, community services. The Colchester ramp road was added of $70,000. A Colchester traffic study was added for a $20,000 addition. I apologize, I'll make this a bit bigger. I can see some councillors leaning in. Hopefully that helps. Uh, is that better? Can you guys see this more clearly now? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, traffic study in Colchester of 20, Gesto sidewalk along County Road 12 of 70,000. Okay, at this point, uh, we would pass it back to council for any other projects that they would like to see reallocated from the- uh, um, um, Councillor Guerin, go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Before I get into a couple I wanna talk about in Ward 1, just to Kate, when you're going through some of those adjustments of, uh, of monies there, I just wanna make sure I'm not missing this. We, have it, we had an original surplus of 243,811, correct? 
through the chair, Councillor Garen, that is correct. Though those monies were earmarked for other projects. So if, if you look at the uh, capital budget pages, you'll note that uh, anything that in the column funded from taxation, yep. that 243,000 was used for uh, those different various capital projects. Okay, and then in addition to that, we had some savings on ball lights, approximately $100,000, but obviously that money is, is not uh, taxation money, correct? You are correct. That money is okay. uh, in life cycle reserve. The okay. other savings uh, that is currently on the shelf to say would be the $190,000 from the traffic enforcement officer yeah. removal. Yeah. So the surplus, the police and the grant money now with the Harbor money being all reallocated. Okay. We're on the same page. So a couple of um, ones on my wish list that have been on a pre prior council. And uh, I just wanted to bring them back up to light. They continue to show up every year on this list and it looks like they're going to continue on there next year probably but i'm hoping to get some support on on these and this is all accessibility and this is all safety so we have cp-20-0004 which is irwin and it is the um constant complaints i get from the residents at that end of town at irwin with respect to the road being unsafe we all know it's a, it's a cut over road a lot of people bypass the light they hang a left down there. They're not residents of Essex in a lot of cases, and they're using that road. And when you're coming from the other way, coming from uh, Northridge, Cottom towards Essex, they'll make a right-hand turn there to avoid the lights as well. And that 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 turn comes on pretty quick for them. If you've driven on that road, you'll know what I'm talking about. You've got uh, you've got narrow shoulders, and, uh, narrow roads in some areas, no shoulders in a lot of area, no pedestrian pathway of any kind. Um, uh, administration identified it's $120,000. So I'm looking for some sort of support on that. Um, and then the other one was CP-20-0019. Um, we have taxpayers over on the, that side of town of Bell and Thomas. We have a, uh, a sidewalk for whatever reason on Thomas just stops. Um, we have lots of people walking to and from school. Um, we have issues with with uh, lighting on that street, but most importantly, it's accessibility. We've had people falling, um, walking on that street. It's very unsafe. It's seventy thousand dollars. I don't think it's too much to ask that we finish those roads in in, in the Bell Thomas and the surrounding areas to, and and link them properly so that people. I mean, th these streets are a couple three blocks off of our main street. The, I can make a case there are streets that are further that further from our main streets that are properly sidewalked. So why these aren't completed, I have no idea. It's $70,000. I think there's an opportunity there to, to get to that this year. And again, those are the two projects I'm looking for some support on. Irwin is a, is a whole different beast. It's a lot of money. Um, we, we have some money going towards uh, uh, consulting to and engineering to look at that road. Uh, we, we've already talked that, so I'm not gonna beat that up too much. We know it needs to be done. And there's also gonna be the road survey and being done this summer. So we'll have some more to be adding to that. So, but these projects, 120,000 for Irwin. Um, this this came to council previously, and it was basically because of the changeover in council, it didn't really go anywhere. So, but the calls haven't stopped. I'm still getting them. I've been out there numerous times, and um, I don't think they're that that these residents on these streets that we're talking about on Bell and Thomas area and on Irwin are are asking for something that. Now, everyone else in our town seems to have that, especially in and around the, the main street area for accessibility. So I'll leave it at that. And hopefully I get some support on that. Um, I think Councillor Van Endelon, you were next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, I mostly support uh, Councillor uh, Guerin. Um, yeah, Ir Irwin is is crucial. I mean, that's just that's a black eye on the whole town as well as being a, a safety issue. It, it, it has to be done. This is unconscionable, and I, I've said this several times. Um, but as much as the sidewalk, the lack of a sidewalk, Thomas and Bell, is a safety issue and it's terrible. And we should have it. There's a more important sidewalk in this in your ward, Councillor Gorn, Gorn that uh, Garen, that I uh, have brought up the last two budgets in a row, and that is. Uh, the sidewalk we need out to Canadian Tire, and uh, now with uh, 
with the uh, Tanzu Estates, 550 homes going in there, those people have no way to walk safely into town. Uh, I, I think that's 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 a, a terrible oversight, and it's going to be far more people. Well, first of all, we've got the employees at, at the the several fast food uh, outlets there, and the Canadian Tire Store, and the new home hardware and plaza going in there, and the new plants going in along Highway Three. We need a sidewalk that connects that neighborhood to the downtown, and because there's thousands of people involved, not just a few people who walk on Thomas and Bell. Um, I know it's been estimated at six hundred thousand dollars. I don't know if it's too late to squeeze some out of the uh, home hardware development to do the part in front of their uh, strip, but uh, we sh we at least we at least have to get the sidewalk uh, to to the new entrance to that right up to Canadian Tire there, where the new entrance to the uh, the subdivision is. I think that's that's the most the most important sidewalk project, far more even than the Gesto one in the entire town. Thanks. And I, I, I will support that one. Councillor Bondi, you were next. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I like uh, Councillor Guerin's suggestions. Uh, the Thomas and Bell, I, you know, I've heard that over the years and the, also the, the sidewalk on Irwin. Yes, I've heard that over the years. It'd be nice to pick off a few of these little wish list items. Oh, um, and I definitely agree with Councillor Vanderdolen. I think that might be a project we have to budget half and half or one third, one third, one third. I don't know if we'll be able to do it all in one budget. But um, one of the one of the issues is in and Councillor Garen said it earlier that you know we agreed to do the streetscape, but not at the expense of not doing any other roads. So if you look at uh, Ward 1, you know, Essex Center, you know, Victoria got added in. That was a big one. And then the road into Viscount in, in Victor. And um, I've had Walnut Street on the budget since I've been on council in 2010, and it's never made it. And I don't even see like the engineering coming up. So I don't know if we could look at getting the engineering you know, earmarked for Walnut. So, you know, if we do get a windfall of money like we did this year, we can get a, you know, a few roads here in, in Harrow. Like, you know, we did get the streetscape, absolutely. But now there's, there is a lot of other roads that still need attention. Arthur Street in Harrow is just horrible. There's a, there's a gap this much all the way down the curb. You can barely walk on it, you'll fall down. And Walnut Street, whatever is happening to it, it's shot. It's full of water. I have pictures that residents send me and we don't have a roads plan. So I can't guarantee to residents that this road's ever going to be done. It's been pushed off again and again and again. And um, just looking to see if, you know, potentially we could look at the engineering at some point. So that road is, is, is ready for when we do get money. And I'll support Councillor Guerin's uh, other little asks. And I'd like to earmark some money for that, that big sidewalk down the Canadian Tire. Go ahead. Councillor Guerin, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I, again, we're not picking your voice. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, so through you, just to um, um, follow up on what Councillor Vanderdolen was saying, I agree 100% that the that sidewalk has to be done. But the, the first phase that they're doing in that area, they'll most of them people will be accessing Bell Street to get to downtown or get to the high school. If you take a look at what, where they're building their those homes, I, what I'm trying to say is I think I think we have an, another year to wait to do that project at six hundred thousand um, dollars because I'm looking at the map right now and yes there are some homes that are going to be um, on that new street but the majority of them are going to be accessing Bell. Bell Street, and I and I'd like to bring in uh, uh, Mr. Gerard on that if he could just kind of verify what I'm saying because I'm looking at the map and that's how I see that first phase, and I also want to know if he could uh, uh, give us maybe all a little update on Walnut because it, it has been on like Councillor Bunny said for a while. I'd like to know where that road rates compared to some of the one other ones we're talking about like Irwin etc. But it does look like the access from the first phases of homes are gonna be through Bell, which makes the sidewalks on Bell and Thomas even more important at, at, for this year. Kevin, if you can answer that. 
Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the sidewalks on Thomas and Bell have been in the council um, budget for quite some years, uh, pulled outside of budget. Um, it is a new asset, so it isn't fun funded by asset management, and um, it would need to be funded by either taxation or other source of revenue. Um, the, the pathway along Maidstone Avenue, um, we are working towards that with developers. We've made provisions with the new Essex Town Centre to include a, a multi-use trail along Maidstone to connect to our future trail system. Um, our first intention is to install the pathway from uh, what would be the Thomas area to, um, to the Essex Town Centre uh, development. And then there is sidewalks and a multi-use trail that's provided through the development, which will connect to South Talbot Road. Um, in addition, we have included uh, with the MTO, we've negotiated a multi-use trail from Victoria Avenue to uh, Maidstone Avenue. We are currently working out the details with the MTO on that project, um, but we should have an answer to that uh, in the coming months. Um, and then that last leg of the pathway from Essex Town Centre to um, South Talbot Road would be the last phase of the pathway that we'd be looking at. Um, and again, looking at partnering with developments to try and get that installed, um, as well as using some development charges as well. So there are plans from administration to get that sidewalk completed. It's not going to happen in one phase. We're not planning for it to happen in one phase. We're looking to leverage our partnerships with developers and also using our DC charges wisely. So um, there are plans there. As far as Walnut Street is concerned, this is also another one, as council has mentioned, that's been in the council budget for pulled outside of budget um, for a few years. Um, we could certainly complete the engineering ahead of the construction, similar to what administration is proposing this year for Irwin. Um, I don't have an estimate right now for the design, um, but if council, if that was council's wish, we could um, earmark, say, $160,000 for now, and I can tighten up that estimate um, before the next meeting. Um, but uh, we can certainly complete that if that's council's prerogative. Any, any further discussion on that? Uh, Councillor Van Endel. Um, yeah, I, I could be persuaded on the Thomas Bell thing, but I, I could just see that, you know, there's, there's way more traffic and danger on the Maidstone ro Road than there is on, on Thomas and Bell. Although, given the partnerships and the leverage and yada yada, and it's only 7, 70,000, I can go along with that. But Walnut Street gives me pause because like we're still in the process of pouring several million dollars into downtown Harrow. Um, and to put another couple of million into one road there, while we're not spending some sort of comparable amount in Ward 3 gives me pause. I mean, we've got a lot of, of uh, very busily traveled concession roads and beach roads that uh, I think are probably more important and it's probably our turn to have some more money spent uh, rather than plowing another couple of million into Ward 4. I mean, you know, Ward 3, uh, there's a lot of people in Ward 3 too, we drive. Um, so I'd be less inclined to support, like I go along with uh, Thomas and Bell, but uh, not Walnut, um, not, not before some, some more roads are done in, in concession three. I mean, remember what we were told about uh, the West End of the fifth concession last year, and, and we swapped that over to the fourth, but you know, that, that's a terrible shape. Talk about, about safety problems and, uh, and uh, you know, three, four or five, they and all those beach roads. So I don't know. I, I, not as supportive of Walnut. Thank you. Uh, I think Councillor Bowman, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, just a couple. Uh, the uh, sidewalks on on Thomas and Bell, I think, are 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 way way overdue. Uh, that that's a must. And uh, the sidewalk on uh, um, Irwin between Thirty Four and, and the Gosville Town Line. Again, those have been asked for for many years, and uh, they're still waiting. So, uh, those are two I could support. Thank you.
Go ahead. Go ahead, Doug. To your worship, maybe council, if I can make a recommendation. Um, sounds like we have four projects potentially out there. Maybe go through them one by one and do a vote. So I had Thomas and Bell, Irwin, Walnut, and I put the Canadian Tire Sidewalk. I think those were the four. Okay, so we'll go uh, one by one. Um, Councillor Verbeek. Aren't, aren't we still haven't, aren't we still listing projects that we hope we can pull from the wish list to be considered? We're Thanks, talking Joe. about these we're, roads right now. Okay, but go ahead. Oh, oh, we're not gonna hear, okay. I'm, I have roads in, in uh, like, have we looked at Arquette and Scott? Like, if we're, if we're comparing where we want some extra money on roads, that's never been looked at. And it's a mess in uh, McGregor, but I, I was waiting my turn to, again, I have to pitch to try and our counselor um, um, Vanderdole and mentioned, you know, um, you know, less spent in Ward 3. And I'm, I'm just trying to pull some funds over to Ward 2 to McGregor. And I'm still going to ask again that we allot some for the uh, um, reserve for 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 Coan, as that's about the only ask there for McGregor, and it's got a whole bunch of projects that are sitting that have been sitting in here since since I came on. So I thought that's what we were still doing is each just listing uh, projects we hoped we could move over from our wish list and uh, get some coin for our wards. And yes, I do agree with Councillor Guerin about that bell. And that would, I hadn't thought of that, but that would help uh, connect those newer, the newer homes back there, um, the bell sidewalk and Thomas. Councillor, go ahead, uh, Kate. Uh, so through the chair, uh, we are getting close to our 730 mark. Uh, I really appreciate the discussion that's been going on here. Uh, we do have another meeting scheduled for January 10th. Um, at this point, uh, I'd like to revisit operating. And again, um, you know, council can feel free to make the resolutions as they see fit. But from the discussion that administration has heard tonight, it seems like most of the deliberations are remaining in capital. And so uh, what we have is the $190,000 traffic enforcement that has been removed. And I think at this point, council is in a position they could technically approve operating in principle uh, should they just decide to keep the OPP uh, monies within operating, meaning either you transfer it to a reserve for future expenditures or it's used in capital. Uh, but that would mean essentially approving the 1.8. If council doesn't have the appetite to do that and wants to investigate reducing the increase to the mill rate, then no, uh, approval of operating in principle would not occur. But again, should, should council feel comfortable with a 1.8% increase, uh, leaving the $190,000 to be discussed at future deliberations, either to be held in reserve or used for capital, we are, uh, it, administration believes we're in a position that we could do that. Okay, uh, Councillor Garen. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. I'd, I'd still like to finish the, the, the four that we were just talking about in capital first. Back on the operations, we can go to that quickly. I think we can knock off those four, and get a yay or nay on them. Um, back to the operate, operation stuff, though. I mean, is there a, what is the ultimate need to have to move forward in principle with that tonight versus waiting another meeting. Councillor Garon, there's no urgency to get it through in principle, but going through the walkthrough in the conversations and feedback received council tonight, there was no other questions other than that one traffic enforcement position. So based on that, that's why we're suggesting you could, if you have the appetite, approve operating in principle, less at 190 as Kate mentioned. Well, I would, okay, then if that's the case, I would recommend that we not um, finalize the operations tonight. I don't see why we can't take a couple of weeks and have another look at it and, and then circle back to it and uh, finalize it the next meeting. Uh, but I would like to continue on with the capital budget part of it before this evening's over. Uh, Councillor uh, Van Dolan, go ahead. 
Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, can administration tell us what would the tax increase be if that 190 for the uh, OPP officer was applied to the tax increase? What would it be? I'm guessing it would be almost zero. Through the chair, just bear with me for one second. You'd be looking at a 0.62% tax increase versus the one8 Thank you. That would be very attractive to a lot of uh, a lot of our citizens. Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I believe we should be approving the operating tonight. We we didn't have a lot of questions on it. It gives our staff some peace of mind. They know what they're working with. I alongside I like Councillor Vanderdolen's suggestion, and come you know the. The increase was paying for a service. We were paying 190 grand for a service, an increase in service in OPP. Since we're not seeing that increase in service, we might as well give it back to the taxpayers. And then we can discuss it again, whoever's here at this table next, the next term to see if they want to bring that up. You know, I, I would have liked to have seen that money stay in the OPP file, but it doesn't look like it will. So with that being said, when the time is right, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the operating budget and put the $190,000 back into our taxpayers' pockets. I agree. Uh, I agree with the councillor bond on the operating uh, part of it. And uh, we, we did ask a lot of questions. And, and the only thing that really come up here with the concern was the OPP uh, cost. So um, I'll take your motion. Okay, and I'll need a seconder for to uh, approve the operating. Uh, Councillor Van and Dolan, all in favor. That's carried. Steve, you had a question? Go ahead. Sorry yeah, about that. I, I, I apologize. Wait. Yeah, I'm not in favor. Um, I, I'm not in favor of taking that $190,000 and, and removing it from the budget. We're, we have a a, a good workable uh, rate that we're talking about that $190,000 needs to go to capital and we need to get more work done in capital. We're talking about being able to put money aside to, to look at, you know, even if we're just getting the engineering done on Walnut, we're looking at the, the sidewalks, we're looking at Irwin, we're looking at that, that $190,000 has a home. Um, it fits our budget. And I think we need to move that to capital. I'm all in favor of approving in principle um, the, uh, the operating budget, but I am not in favor of removing that $190,000 uh, and not putting it into capital. So I won't support this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Verbeek, go ahead. Thanks. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for putting the brakes on there. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman, I have to tell the rest of you, I struggle when I, uh, because on the tablet, I can only see four little screens. But when you called for the vote, I, I had heard Doc, um, Councillor Guerin oppose and I didn't see Councillor Bowman's hand go up and I wasn't going to support Councillor Bondi's motion, but I couldn't see anybody else. So it's a bit of a struggle, right? So when we can Okay, so see, we, can, we can see you I, now. So I'll call the vote again, okay? Yeah, that would be helpful because I, I, I couldn't see and I, that would be helpful. Maybe we, we say it or record it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Guerin, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I must have misunderstood too through you. I, I thought we were just voting to approve the, I thought it was pulling the 190 out, moving to the capital, and even the 1.8. I That's what I thought the motion. I didn't know there was a motion to, to leave that in operation to reduce the, the rate or anything like that. So I, I was not a, I was not in approval of that. Okay, thank so you. If you could read so, the motion back. Okay, so we'll go to Councillor Bondi again. Councillor Bond, you, you made a motion. Can you, uh, Councillor Bjorkman, did you want to say anything before I ask? Uh, okay, go ahead. Councillor Bondi, do you want to read your uh, motion again? Sure, Mr. Mayor, that it's just, sorry, I had to plug in my iPad, it died. Um, that we uh, <laughs> approve the operating budget and uh, principal, and we pass the savings uh, from the canceled OPP speed position back to our taxpayers instead of moving it into capital. Okay, thank you. Is there support on that? Seconder? Oh, there were, uh, Councillor Van Endel supported it. 
So, a uh, question. Go ahead. You supported it, Councillor. Uh, go yes, ahead. Uh, but as Councillor Garen said, there is some confusion around this. Uh, I was under the impression that there is uh, still some un unallocated money in the budget after if we uh, pass this, that there was still some unallocated uh, capital for some extra projects that we haven't dealt with, partially due to that 900,000 uh, we recently received. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, Kate, if you Thanks. can uh, answer that, go ahead. Yeah, through the chair to Councillor Vanderdolen, you are correct, there remains that can be dedicated to infrastructure projects. That's the additional grant monies. You blipped out on the amount, sorry. Nine hundred and eleven thousand seven hundred and forty-one that can be designated for infrastructure projects. Okay, uh, that answers it. Councillor Bjorkman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you to council. And just to be clear, at the end of our deliberation at the next meeting, we can still return X amount of dollars and X amount of percentage to the voters, to our residents. But at this point, it allows us to keep all of our options on the table. Thank you. Okay, I true? will allow a friendly amendment that we approve the operating in principle and move the 190,000 over to capital for further deliberations. Great, that okay? that's good. Agreed. Great, great. Okay, the seconder does. All in favor of this, please. That's approved, thank you. Through the chair, as, as that motion has now gone through, I would just like final tracking sheet as this motion. Am I, am I correct in that? No. You're cutting uh, out. Councillor Vanadol can't hear you. Sorry, there appears to be a bit of a leg in my mic. Can you guys hear me now? We can hear you. You're cutting out. You blip. There's like two okay. seconds of miss. It's still occurring or can you hear me okay? Okay, I apologize. I'll have to get that sorted out for our next meeting. Uh, what I'd like to do now, um, as that motion has gone through, I'd like, uh, encompassed in that motion is our statement of adjustments. I'd like to pull it on screen for council to see, to make sure that everyone's uh, in agreement, agreement with what just went through. So as you can see on the screen, uh, we have reduced the traffic enforcement uh, officer. We've reallocated it to capital, results in a larger surplus of $433,000, uh, meaning that there is an additional 190 that hasn't been earmarked for capital purposes yet. The other 243,000 was earmarked previously. And again, you'll note that in your funded from taxation column in your proposed capital budget. We also have here noted the additional uh, grant monies. Uh, that's always been a flow through for operations. So we've just noted it here. Uh, it flows through into capital as well. So at this point here, uh, Kate, did you have something to add? Yes, there, there is one more motion that uh, administration is hoping to get approved uh, tonight. And that, that would be the motion regarding the carry forward projects. And, and so if Shelly wouldn't mind switching back to the agenda, we can read that motion. It's not asking for any additional request. It is just asking for administration or for council to approve any projects that have been previously approved uh, to, to continue on in 2022. Yeah, these, these uh, are projects that's already been approved council, so. So uh, Deputy Mayor makes a motion and uh, Councillor Bjorkman supports it. Second, it. all in favor, moving them projects. It's approved, thank you. Go ahead, Doug. Your Worship. Um, from our discussion here, I think the next steps would be, like I said, we had Thomas and Bell, Irwin, Walnut, 
Um, Maidstone Ave sidewalk, I have Cohen Reserve, I heard Councillor Verbeek. What I would suggest is if Council could send to our Director of Corporate Services um, within the next couple of weeks, any projects that you may want, then we can compile that list and send it to Council prior, prior to January 10th. So you know in advance what this, uh, projects you can discuss. Um, okay, we had some very healthy discussion on the budget and uh, yep, it was a good night. So at this point here, um, I'm going to need a motion to adjourn. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Vandal, all in favor? Carried, have a great evening.